Don't stop, Hilda. I was almost enjoying that. It's the first time I've heard you singing since... Well, for ages. Yeah, since Stan, you mean. Well, just doesn't seem right singing. Oh, come on. Don't feel guilty cos you're singing, love. No, well, it just suddenly come to me, you see, that for the first time, he, he wasn't on my mind, like. Oh. Any old, have you made your New Year's resolutions yet? I'll give up making any, Hilda. It's easier than giving up out else. Why do you want to know? Have you made one? Well, not exactly a resolution, no, but uh, I have come to a decision, now. Oh? Well, I, I was thinking of uh, seeing about getting the lodger. Oh, what a good idea. Well, you get fed up with an empty house, don't you? Yeah, well, you, you miss having somebody to do for, you know. When you think what it was like before, with Stan and Eddie and all. Now there's just me. You get yourself a lodger, love. Get yourself somebody better than she got, though. Hey, hey, Tony's all right. Depends on your point of view, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't thinking of getting a fella. Oh, no. No, I thought more, perhaps, a young woman working away from home, looking mm. for somewhere comfortable. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Rover's return. Oh, yes. Oh, wh what time will that be? Who is it, Betty? It's Newton and Ridley. They want I'll to... I'll take that. Oh. Oh, Gordon Lewis here. Oh, yes. Yes, certainly it'll be convenient. Yes, yes, we'll expect her then. All right, bye. Any calls from the brewery, Betty? You always get me, right? I'm good, you, but I haven't got oh, the chance. Oh, just so long as you know. A special effort today, Hilda. We're having a very important visitor. Sarah Ridley is calling round on us sometime this afternoon. She's coming round specially to have a chat with me. So let's have everybody on the ball, eh? Any particular reason why she's coming? Well, it's like her secretary says. She's got mm. some important news for me. Mm. And she wants to tell me herself. Well, keep at it. Yes. Sarah Ridley's secretary, eh? And Sarah's coming round herself, in the flesh, in person. Yeah, well, that's not normal, is it? Must be summer top. Tell you what I think. I think she's coming round to uh, give Gordon Lewis the nod. Yeah, well, we always knew he'd get it, didn't we? If we weren't kidding ourselves. Aye. I suppose we did. Honestly, Billy, you must have had that years. These were all the rage, you know. <laughs> Look at them bottoms, eh? Oh, well, you can't get married in that. Honestly, I'm not being awkward. Yeah, I know. I must have had this suit 15 years, you know. I don't wear them much, you see. But you're right. I mean, I wouldn't wear this suit to somebody else's wedding, never mind my own. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that's two of us need wedding outfits. Well, we'd better get a move on then in Sharpish, because we've only got a week, haven't we? Tell you what, there's at least two big stores in town got the sales starting tomorrow. We might find some bargains. Well, it'd be better for me than this afternoon, cos I've got this job in Seville Street. I've swore I'd finish it. Right, well, that's what we'll do then. Get there early, first thing. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? What? When I've thought about it, I've always imagined myself wearing this wonderful gown to get married in, you know, long train, the lot, coming out of some little country church somewhere, blossoms in the trees. And here we are, booked into Weatherfield Registry Office and looking for a wedding outfit in the sale. Not exactly your dreams come true, is it? I don't mind. Honestly. Sooner than you spending your money on the wedding, I'd rather have it in my handbag. I'll say one thing for you. You're honest. Wicked, but honest. I know. You really don't mind about the wedding? No. I'm happy. Everything's great. Except for Kevin. I just wish he'd come to Southampton with us. Well, I've talked to him till I'm blue in the face. I mean, what more can I do? Perhaps if I ever talked to him. Can't do any harm, can it? I mean, there's no harm in trying. No. No, there's no harm in trying. To you. Oh, thank you. I just sold the diary. Oh, 2nd of January. That's not all that remarkable. No, it's too... Uh, well, you know, one of those big ones. It's like a proper book, you know, mm. with a, a page a day to fill in with all your doings. Oh, good. I was beginning to think we'd never shift any of them. But it was a really ordinary-looking woman that bought it, and I just thought to myself, how on earth is she going to fill up a page every day? I mean, there's no way I could do it. But then nothing ever happens to me. Oh, give over. Well, admittedly, it doesn't happen regular on a day-to-day -day basis, but when it does happen, it happens in big lumps. How do you mean? Well, it's either feast or famine with you, isn't it? 
like having two blokes at once, you know, Derek and Victor, or else not at all. <laughs> not a lot of difference, really. That's a very cynical remark for you, that is. Morning. Hello, Good morning, uh, I've got an advert for your window. I wrote it out if you can read me writing. Oh. Mm. Good home available for respectable lady lodger. Oh, you're taking a lodger, Hilda? Well, I just thought, you oh. know. Business, woman or professional young lady preferred, apply 13 coronation. I don't think you can put that, Mrs Ogden. What? Oh, the professional young lady bit. You think that sounds a bit naughty? Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Oh, thank you, my best. I don't know what... Oh, no, I don't mean that at all. I mean... I don't think you can say that it's a woman that you want, you see. I mean, well, it's the sex discrimination, though, isn't there, about jobs and everything? Well, I don't know. Does that apply to lodgers? Mm. Could be right. Well, I mean, you hear these cases, don't you? I think you have to put person. Do you think so? Well, I mean, I don't know, really. You know, I'm well, not an listen, expert. Well, how does this sound? Good home available for respectable lodger, business or professional person preferred. Oh, that'll do nicely. Should keep out the riffraff, shouldn't it? Last thing you want when you get to my time of life, riff-raff. By the way, Mike, hmm? I got in a stock of those cigars you like. Here, yeah, have one. Oh, well done, that man. What was it there, Scott? On the house. What is it, someone's birthday or something? Oh, well, not exactly, but uh, something like that. <laughs> um, public's off of ale, this is. But all you wish is Cheers, Jack. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the Count Dracula today has been buying drinks all round. Is that right? I've got a feeling he's got some good news heading in his direction. Uh, got the pub, has he? Looks like it. Oh, you know how I've been for it. I mean, sent a letter in and everything. Never heard of Dicky Bird. Not even the decency of a flipping reply. All as I can say is, I'm glad I'm not working for a firm like that. Have a feeling I shan't be either. No, it's not right fond of you, is it? Well, if he is, he conceals it very well. Well, if he buys me a pint, can't be all bad. Not all of us are anybody's for the price of a pint, you know. Poor outlook for you, is it? You could say that. I've got a feeling the first thing he'll do is get shut of me. Hiya. Hiya. Hello, baby. We were just thinking about having some lunch. Oh, great, I'm starving. What are we having? Fish and chips. As soon as you've still got your coat on, you can walk down to Jackson's Chippy with me. What do you need me for? You don't need me to carry a few chips. Yeah, I do. Oh, blimey, Dad. I've been on my feet all morning. I need a chip carrier's mate, Debbie. Come on. Oh, yeah. Kevin? Yeah? I've been wanting the chance to have a talk. Oh, yeah. What about...? Well, about me and your dad. And about Debbie and about you. You know, your dad really wants you to come to Southampton with us, you know. He doesn't want to move down there without you. Yeah. So he said. Yeah, well, what I wanted to tell you was it's not just your dad that wants you to come to Southampton. It's me as well. I mean it very much. Well, it's like you've told me, Dad. I'm not coming. Look, I want you to understand something. I don't want to come between you and your dad or Debbie. What I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to take him away from you. Well, if that's the case, you won't mind moving in here, will you? We've been into all that, Kevin. I happen to like it here. Oh, come on, Kevin. Stop talking to me as I was a foreigner or something. I happen to come from round here myself. I know you're thinking about your job. Well, there's plenty more work down there for your dad and for Debbie and for you as well. With better money and a better way of life. We was doing all right before. Look, we've gone into all this very carefully. It makes sense to move down there. But if you won't come, then you've got to face it, Kevin. You're splitting this family up. I'm splitting the family up, me? It makes me sick. You give all this talk about keeping the family together. It's you who's pulling it to pieces. We was getting along great till you come around and started telling me dad what to do and where to do it. Well, you can make a fool of him and our Debbie. But don't try it on me. Come on, lads, it's three o'clock. Let's be having your glasses. Hey, stick it away. Oh, give over. It's after time. You're going to get us done again if you don't shift. You'll be yeah, all right, no. lightning never no. strikes twice no. in the same pub. Beck, come on, can you deal with him? 
Come on, Jack. Just be having you. Just one last pint, that's all. It's after time. You've got a window cleaning round waiting for you. Not this afternoon. I've been rained off. Rained off? The amount you've sucked, you should have been drained off. I'll get Gordon Lewis. He'll shift. We him. don't need Gordon Lewis. Now, listen, Duck Egg. If you don't shut up, sup up and shove off within the next ten seconds, your love life could take a sudden turn for the worse, and you'll be talking in a very high, squeaky voice for the rest of your natural. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Ridley. Afternoon. Hello, Bet. Hiya. Uh, is Mr Lewis about? He should be expecting me. Uh, I think he's in the sitting room. Shall I get him? No, it's all right. I'll get through. Hey, hey, hey. Aren't you from Brewery? Leave it, Jack. Just, no, no. Just, just hang on. I applied for this pub manager lark here. Which I could do standing on my head, and you never even give me the decency of a reply. Well, I'm sorry about that, and I'll certainly look into it, but I'm afraid the position's filled now. Too late to apologise, too late, because you have done yourself a thick and lost a good man. In short, I'll give your trips a right drenching. Well, I'm sure you can cope, Bert. Isn't that typical of me, eh? Showing myself up with her stuff there. I shouldn't worry about it, lovey. Oh, it was worrying. It's only my job, innit? I suppose a pint and a packet of crisps out of the question, then. Oh. All right, all right. Get. I couldn't stop it in this place, anyway. Oh, oh no sugar for me, thanks. Oh, I must have sugar in my coffee. Me. <laughs> Can't stand it without. Well, I'll get straight to the point, Gordon. You'll no doubt be wondering why I wanted a private word. Well, I take it it's about the managership. Yes, yes it is. In a way. Oh. I was very impressed by your interview the other day. You made out a very strong case for transforming this place. Oh, thank you. You clearly put a lot of thought into it, and you knew what you wanted to see done here. Nothing airy-fairy about it, all very practical. Aye. Well, though I say it myself, I think I know the trade. I'm sure you do, and so is George Newton. Well, I'm very pleased. A year from now, you'll walk into that bar and you'll not recognise it. Oh, now, wait a minute, Gordon. Don't go jumping to the wrong conclusions. We're not giving you the rovers. Hey, but you've just no, said... No, we have something else so... in mind for you. Now, all those plans of yours for the rovers, as I said, they're good ideas. But the rovers isn't the right pub for them. We want you to take over the docker's arms. The docker's arms? Well, a bit rough, I thought, last time I went in there. Yes. You don't think it has to remain that way, though, do you? Well, no, no. I suppose you could do something with it. Well, there's a lot of redevelopment going on down there. The Dockers could have a big future, if you think you could cope with it. Oh, oh, I can cope with it. Certainly, I can cope with it. Good. Then that's settled. Well, I hope you're pleased. Oh well, yes. Well, you sprung it on me. Uh, yes, I think I'm pleased. Well, who's getting this place? He's talking long enough, isn't he? Captain, he's telling her about all the staff changes he's going to make, all the dead wood he's going to cut out, all the new blood he's going to bring in. I wish you wouldn't say things like that, lovey. Sarah Ridley wants you. Me? She's got something to say to you. Oh. And can't you say it? I think you'd better hear it from her. Oh. I see. Everything's settled. Settled, Betty? <laughs> I wouldn't call it settled. Huh? More like a big upheaval, in my opinion. Sit down, Bert. Make yourself comfortable. Not easy. Hmm? Feeling comfortable at this moment in time. You know how they reckon when people are drowning, the past lives flash in front of their eyes. Right now, I feel as though my old future's flashing in front of mine. I don't know why I'm gabbling on like this. I'll shut up now. Well, of course I know there's been a lot of uncertainty here at the Rovers lately. Ever since Mrs. Walker let go of the reins, in fact. But I hope the decisions we've made will change all that. Now, when we had the interviews the other day, Gordon, Mr. Lewis, made some interesting proposals for the changing and the development of the character of this place. I can imagine. But both George Newton and myself felt that uh, the Rovers has had enough chopping and changing for a while. We want the Rovers to continue much as it is now. And that's mainly why we think you're the right person for the manager's job. Me? You're not giving it to Gordon? We'll be using Gordon's talents elsewhere. George and I both think that you can do a very good job here. Are you having me on? Do you really mean it? Yes, of course. I don't know why you're so surprised. 
You've not changed your mind about wanting the responsibility, I hope. Oh, no. No, I've not changed my mind. It's just beginning to dawn on me, though. It's going to change things, this, isn't it? It's going to change all my life. Mrs. Ogden, is it? That's right, yeah. I've come about your advert. The one of the news agents when you're on Rosamond Street. Well, by the heck, that were quick. I only put it in this dinner time. So the lodgings haven't gone then? Well, uh, not exactly, no. No, the thing is, you see, like I said in the advert, uh, what I had in mind was, uh, well, you know, like a, a business person. Oh, well, I think that more or less suits me. I'm uh, with British Rail in booking office. Oh, in the booking office, are you? Hmm. Yes, well, I, uh, I don't really know what to say, uh, Mr... Uh... Wakefield. Henry Wakefield. Oh, uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, well, uh, look, it, it's a bit cold for standing outside talking. Since you're here, you'd better come inside a minute. Uh, uh, well, it sits me bike. I, uh, I normally chain it up and there's only your drain pipe. Oh, I know what you mean. You don't leave anything nowadays. Tell you what, fetch it inside. You can stand it in the lobby. Thanks very much. Better be safe than sorry. Well, I hope you're pleased with yourself. What's wrong now? You damn well know what's wrong. You've been picking on Elaine, haven't you? Giving her a mouthful. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, that's great, though. You can't even have an argument with her now. Say something she don't like, she comes running to you, moaning. No, she didn't. She never said a word. Oh, come on. She must have said something. I'm telling you, she never said a word. I asked her what was wrong, she wouldn't say. But I do know this. When me and our Debbie come back from that fish and chip shop, you'd gone and Elaine was crying. I didn't say anything, what? Oh, come on, Kevin, you must stand. All right, Debbie. All I said was I'm not moving down salt. Now, come on, you must have said more than that, and I want to know. All right, I'll tell you. She was blaming me for causing trouble, and I said it was her, because it was. Because we've got no one great till she come along trying to run things. I'm nothing against her as a person, but when she starts laying down the law about where we're going to live... She's done no such thing. It's all been talked over. It's not her, Kevin. Me and me dad want to move down there as well. It's you. It's you that's causing all this trouble, not Elaine. Debbie's right, and there's been far too much of it. And when you start making Elaine cry... Oh, that's typical, that. Like. She's got you right under the thumb. When she says jump, you jump. Do you know you're looking for a flaming good hiding? And don't think you're too old to get one, because you're not. Any more out of you, and you'll get a damn good thumping. Well, that's straight enough. Now I know where to stand, don't I? Betty, love, yeah. will you give everybody what they want? Oh, I will, love. Yeah. When uh, Sarah told me I've got the job, it was on two conditions, mind. What are they? I have to live in. Well, I thought, try and stop me. I've only ever had one room to myself. In my life now, I've got the whole house. <laughs> what were the other conditions? Uh, I've got to go on a training course. It's not so bad, though, only a couple of weeks. They teach you about PAT and all that. Man management, that's what you'll be learning. And if I pick up any good tips, love, I'll pass them on. Right. <laughs> well, cheers, I'm very pleased for you. Just goes to show you can still get on even if you come from nothing. Thank you, Hilda. <laughs> Bit of a letdown for you, though, wasn't it? You were counting on it, weren't you? Still, I suppose somebody's got to be disappointed. Oh, I'm not disappointed, Hilda. Didn't Beth tell you? Newton and Ridley have given me my own pub. Ah, right, big place. They've got to modernise it, spend a lot of money on it. It'll be a showpiece for the brewery. Oh, which pub is it? Uh, the Docker's Arms. The <laughs> Docker's Arms? God blimey, mate, I wandered in there once. It's like cold, it's with draft beer. It's dead rough. I mean, they play tennis with hammers around there, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of redevelopment going on around there, you know. I mean, office blocks, everything. That's right, you look on the bright side. Let a smile be your umbrella. It's very true, that <laughs> Get yourself a drink, Betty, love. OK, love. But I dare say you feel a bit funny having Bet in charge, have you? Well, I'll have to learn to cope, same as you will. <laughs> yeah, well, you have it to do, don't you? Yeah. We've all got us problems. I mean, look at me. Put an advert in for a lodger this dinner time. <laughs> Fella come round this afternoon. I thought you wanted a lady lodger. Oh, I do. Well, I did. He seems quite respectable, though. Got a good job and all. British Rail, but he is inside in the office. Well, are you taking him away? I don't know what to do, Betty. I told him I got other people coming to see me and would he come back tomorrow, but I don't know what I'm going to tell him. Anyway, well done, bit my girl. Cheers, my love. Yeah, good luck there, all the best. See, I still can't believe it. 
Me. Me own poem. I just know it's going to change my life somehow. <laughs> Nothing will change you, darling. Ah, uh, maybe not. But it's a funny feeling all the same. It's like a milestone in my life, do you know what I mean? As though nothing's ever going to be quite the same again. I feel as though I'm waving goodbye to something inside myself already. You'll be a very good landlady. Well, Sarah Ridley seems to think so. She said that I was ideally suited to the Rover's return. And you are. And what you meant was, this is a rough old pub, and they need a rough old bird to take charge of it. <laughs> oh, charming. <laughs> oh, you can laugh, Gordon. But he's right about one thing. I am in charge. Get it? Got it? Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers, cheers, my lovely. Well cheers. done. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, good luck. Thank All you. the best. I'll be late. I'll get it. Hiya. Hey. Did you manage to get that job done you were finishing? Yeah, I did, yeah. So we're all right for a shopping expedition first thing in the morning? Uh -huh. Good. I'm dragging your dad round the sales tomorrow. I'm going to get him a suit he won't show me up in. Got to sort something out for you as well, haven't we? Do that Saturday morning if you're not working. No, I'm not working. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'm moving out of here. No point hanging him out waiting to be chucked out when you sell the house. So I'm going now. Oh, don't be so daft, Kevin. Don't talk so wet. I'm not talking wet. I can't talk to you, can I? You're not interested. You've made that quite clear. Right. I'm off then. Kevin, this is because of me and... No, it's not. Take no notice of him. You know where I'm going, they'll tell you. Oh, Kevin, don't be so stupid. I'll see you sometime. Kevin, don't be daft. Don't let him go, Bill. What can I do? I've talked to him till I'm sick. He's gone. He's really gone. He's left all. This is all my fault. I know it is. No, it's not. It's the last thing I wanted, Bill, to split your family up. Look, perhaps we should call the wedding off. Postpone it. Forget anyway. it. I'm not waiting for our Kevin's permission to get married. We're getting married next week, as planned. And that's all there is to it. I'll bring it round about half eleven. I'll see what I can do. I can't promise anything, but I'll do my best. And you, mate. Oi. If you think you can get better service out of Dutton's, then come and tell me I'll buy you a pint. And if you can't, you buy me one. Let me, Kevin. For a minute I thought we had flaming burglars. No, it's only me. Got in a bit early. Got it before your breakfast, but look of it. Why didn't you drop the catch? I don't know. Must have forgot. <clears throat> All right. Where's the Judy? The what? The Judy. The girl you had in the back. Or have you hid her in the boot? I'm not having a girl in the back, honest. What's this then? It's a blanket, innit? Is it in the back? Did you keep me last night? There's nowhere else to go. What's wrong with home? Your dad sold your bed. We had a row. I stormed out. Thought one of my mates had put me up. Got had his sister's family stuff and so. There's only here. Had your breakfast? Not yet, no. Yeah. And put the kettle on. You, uh, won't tell my dad where I was. Or he might think you're stupid. And who's to blame him? Well? As far as I can see, he's taken his shirts, his underpants, his socks, a pair of shoes, his shaving things, and one of his car magazines. Oh, not his car magazines. He's serious if he's taking them. Look, I know it's not funny, but what can you do? 
Flaming kids. Don't ever have kids. What do you mean, don't ever have kids? You're wishing two of them on me. May the Lord forgive me. Don't blame him. It's your fault for not bringing him up proper. If you treated him like you treated me, none of this would have happened. Look how you went on when I said I were leaving home. Yeah, but you were a girl. Did you hear that? That's sexual discrimination, that is what you've just said. Yeah, and there's a lot more where that came from, I know. Look, Look it's you... no good worrying. He's made his bed, he can flaming lie on it. Will he go into work? How the hell do I know what he'll do? Will he? Of course he will. Then make sure you phone him up, see that he's all right. I'll go round there and give him a flaming good idea, more like. And then they blame the kids. Right, that's me installed. <laughs> what time did they get in touch, then? Eight o'clock this morning. Oh. Yeah, pack your bags, get over to the Rover's return. And there's me looking forward to a nice day out at Haydock Park. It's <laughs> a powder blue, which suits me. It sets off the natural colour of my hair. <laughs> be a bandit. Yeah, that is a problem. <laughs> yeah, it won't be your only problem if you don't stop gassing and get some work done. Who's that? It's Mr Lewis. Well, you wouldn't recognise me. <laughs> Summer, I've always wanted this. To look like that handsome devil Frank Harvey. So last night, I get this photo of him. Get myself down to a plastic surgeon, and here I am. What do you think? What are you doing here? Oh, do I have to go through all that again? Oh, all right, all right, I'll make it short. Now, you know Big Les down at the Docker's Arms, where Gordon's taken over? Well, last night, closing time, big fight breaks out, right? Les gets in between these two heavies. They both give him one, and Les ends up down the Salford Royal with a fractured jaw. Mm -hmm. Gordon Lewis is classy pub for you. Oh, I told him. Yeah, well... This morning, the brewery is on the blower to the pair of us. Gordon takes over at the dockers, as from now, and I'm in here. Oh, it's all right, it's all right, it's not permanent. I know the story. I'm only in here till you take over official. But still, I bet him he's better than nothing, isn't it, eh? <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> I don't know how we've lived so long without you. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> right, so who's gonna make me a cup of coffee, then? Oh, I'll make you one. Oh, good girl. <laughs> Nice to have me back, innit, eh? What the hell do they think they're playing at? Oh, no, I'm not having this. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never yeah, mind, yeah. eh? It's like flaming Fred Carnos. Am I the manager, yes, or answer? I'm not having it, Betty's oh, going. Hold your horses a minute, missus. Look, you don't take over official till you've been on that two-week course. So what? So what? Look, it's all right for you, your bread's buttered. What about Muggies here when you up it for the couple of weeks? Get rid of him, I'm on me tod. I mean, I know it. that might not be much, but, I mean, it's better than nothing. Come on. It's easier to get on with than Gordon Lewis, lovely. Bye, Eck Betty. If that's a reference, God help him. So he goes off and we finish up with this new fella. Well, he's not new. Frank Harvey, you know him. I'll be glad when they get that pub sorted out. Do you think it ever will, under Oh, <laughs> There's a point. Oh, she's got all her chairs at home as bad. She won't stand for no nonsense. Yeah, well, I should know that better than most, but it still came as a bit of a shock. I mean, jumping straight from barmaid to manageress. Well, there's many a barmaid marries the manager and gets the job automatic. Now, at least Bet was chosen by the brewery. It was Sarah Ridley what did it, you know. I think she was doing her bit for women. And good on her, what do you say, dear? Oh, definitely, Hilda, good on her. Yeah. Well, gives us something to talk about, doesn't it? Oh, Weir, yeah, what am I doing? Going without what I come for. Oh, you've not just come in for a chat, then? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, package of bourbon creams, please. Right. I'm having a visitor. Hello, hello, hello. No, it's Mr Wakefield in what answered my advertisement for a lodge. Oh, you'll have people talking, Hilda. Do you think so? Only, I, I wouldn't want no gossip. Do I, I uh, think so? You get yourself a lodger. Ah, go on, it'll be a bit of company for you. And a few extra quid in your pocket. You think it's all right, then? Uh, only I have been worrying a bit. Well, for Pete's sake, why? I mean, look at Alfie. He's got bed under his roof. No one goes on about them, do they? <laughs> look, take me notice, Hilda. They've just about picked the worst example they could. This fella's not a male version of Bet Lynch, is he? Oh, good heavens, no. Well, there you are, then. Grab him while he's still breathing. Dead right. And even if there is talk, you're above that sort of thing, aren't you, Hilda? Eh? Oh, yes. Well, but keep him quiet, won't you? I don't want boy George coming through at walls. <laughs> oh, he's not that sort. Any road, I've not made my mind up yet, but, uh, well, what you all say is very reassuring. Thank you very much. Sure, I'll Bye bye, all. Oh, well, there goes one of life's innocents. Lucky devil. Amen. I couldn't put my hand on my heart and say I'm over the moon about this. You know, I still say she's too good for him. 
mind. She's just as much right to make a mistake as anybody else. Well, I hope you're going to the wedding. Certainly I'm going to the wedding, but not for him. She needs a family around at a time like this, and I'm all she's got. Excuse me, could I have a word? <clears throat> I'm talking to this lady at the moment. Well, it will only take a minute. Excuse me, Miss Riley. <clears throat> well? Well, uh, can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Well, I'd just like you to know that I'm glad you're coming to the wedding. Elaine told me you were coming, and I'm very glad. It's her wedding I'm going to. Yes, I know, but I'll be there as well. Uh, there are one or two other things. First off, I want you to know that I'll do my best to make it happen. If I hate you better, or I'll give you a good hiding. If I don't, I'll let you know, and that's a promise. And second, like I say, I'll work out to give her a good life. But one thing I'm rotten at is organising. To be honest with you, I couldn't organise a booze up in the brewery. And this wedding's got me a trifle worried. You know, like laying on the cars, making sure no goes wrong. And you want me to help you? Yeah. you got the cheek of the devil. But the Subbert, you've got enough sense to come to the right place. I'm doing this for her, mind. Oh, no, I wouldn't ask you for myself. Right, now where are you getting cars from? Oh, <coughs> got a car here somewhere. I see. Right. Yeah. Would you like a drink? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I've only just got this. Oh, go on then, spurn me. <laughs> As if I would. Are you sure you don't want one? Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, can I take him away for a minute? Oh, if you must deprive me, Hilda. This is in a good cause. No, I, I was just wondering if you knew how to tighten a bedstead up. Mm. Only one of mine's a bit on the rickety side. Well, have a go then. Only, uh, well, I'm expecting my prospective gentleman lodger this afternoon. Oh. You've decided to have him then? Oh, no, there's not firm. But I'll be showing him round, you see. And I wouldn't want the bed to collapse under him while he was trying it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry to take your man away from you. If I see any more outside, I'll send them in. <laughs> Thank you. Fixed it. This is Ogden. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you frightened the life out of me. I'm sorry, love. I've fixed it. It's as steady as a rock. Oh, yeah, I'm a good lad. Hey, could you manage a cup of tea? Only I've got the kettle on. Yeah, I'll have one if you're making. Right. It's a bit early for spring cleaning, isn't it? Ah, oh, well, I'm expecting Mr. Wakefield, you see. Uh, I don't want him to catch me untidy. Oh, it's a little palace. Yes, well, it's uh, not so bad, although I do say it myself. <laughs> of course, you don't make as much mess when you're on your own, you know. I suppose you still miss him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll miss him for a long time yet, love. We had a fair number of years together. There's a lot to remember. We might grumble a lot of swimming, you know, but it's nice to have somebody to look after. <laughs> Excuse me. Here's your ham sandwiches, and I hope they choke you. It's all very well, you phoning your ordering, but we don't have a delivery service. We're rushed to glory over there. And we're working through, love. No time for rovers today. I'm very pleased to hear it. Bottle of lager, is it? Yeah. You want anything, Mrs. Toesler? Yeah, I'd like to get back to work. Oh, uh, call in at Clarence Street while you're out. Have a look at that room. Yeah, OK. What room's this? Oh, uh, he's after dates. What for? He's had a row at home. You know the way he feels about this wedding. I mean, he slept in the back of this car last night, but don't tell his dad whatever you do. Why not? Because he doesn't want him to know. But he ought to know, Brian. He ought to be the first to know. And is that how you'd like Nicky to carry on when he grows up? Would you like him to leave home and let everybody in the neighbourhood know where he is except his dad? Is that how you'd like your son to behave? Think about it, Brian. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bet. Just don't make a habit of it. <laughs> oh. Did you talk to him? No, he wasn't there. But Brian says he's all right. Now, don't worry. He'll come to no harm. Just one of them daft tricks lads get up to. I'd like you to hear that from him. I don't worry, I will. So that's it, then. Uh, I'll let you have the official photographs and you can sort out the most appropriate. Right. Uh, if I can get our own photographer around, I will, but to be honest, it's doubtful. Now, you're sure you don't want me to write a piece of paper? Uh, no, no, thank you. I'll do that. And it will go in this week, definite. If you get the photographs to me in time. Oh, don't worry, you'll get them. Ah, now let's see what's the next on the agenda. Oh, yes, uh, flowers. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that's the newspaper side scene, too. Now I'm off to Flores. 
Right, Uncle. Mm. You'd have been a right chip eight, wouldn't you? <laughs> a right what? I think it's army talk for mess. Oh. Well, stop acting so dumb. You're a lot shrewder than your crack on. Yes, we're a culling lot of Webster's, you know. You'll find out. Just how did you get round him, Webster? Must be one of my many charms. How did you fall for me? I thought you were helpless. Come to think of it, so did he. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> Come on. Mrs. Ogden, yeah. you don't have to buy me a drink. Yeah. You shut up, it's the least I can do. Now, what's it to be? Half a bitter, please. Half a bitter in the light okay, egg. Love it. Hello, <laughs> fine. Young men drink sour. That's how we're tackling Gorisov talked about. Yeah. If you must know, he's been very helpful. There was a rickety bed, you don't see. Don't make things worse, lad. Don't make things worse. Oh, oh, you can't talk to some folk. I thought you were having a lodge, your elder. How many more fellows do you want? That's who we're getting the house ready for. I've decided. If he gives a good account of himself, I'm having him. Do you hear that? John Collins to a T. I'm having him. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get on with your lodge? I mean, I mean uh, what do you think of them as, as a generality? Well, the money's very welcome. I mean, I'm not well, saying it isn't, but... Well, the house doesn't seem to be your own somehow. I mean, there are times, you see, when you just want to, to mooch about or loosen your corsets, in the manner of speaking, but I can't. Yeah, I know what you mean. What do you think of landlords, Curly, as a, as a generality like? And speaking as a fellow member of Lodges Anonymous? Well, absolutely. I mean, your life isn't your own, is it? I mean, there must be some nights when you just want to sit around and loosen your corsets. Sorry, ladies, I'm interrupting. You were talking about Lodges. Makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? It does that. Still, we're all right, Cock. I mean, you've got Emily, I've got Al. Not like some I could mention. Hi, Al. Hey. Rule one, that. Always keep the nerves jangling. Not like some I could mention. Oh, what's she on about? Who knows, we bet. <laughs> hey, uh, you going to this wedding on Wednesday? She won't talk to me about weddings. Why's that, then? You had a very traumatic experience, didn't you, mate? Think this one would do a Mavis? Who knows? <laughs> What's uh, doing a Mavis? You better get the drinks in again. It's a very long story. Oh, How's it look? Just right. Are you sure it doesn't need sharpening just a bit more? I've told you, it's just right. Well, it's not too sharp, is it? Will you be told? <laughs> you look smashing. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? I have got this right. It is me that's getting married. Well, it's exciting for me and all. Oh, it's <laughs> exciting for all of us kids. So go and get that dress off while it's still fit to wear. And make sure your dad isn't strangling himself with his collar and tie. <laughs> oh, hello. Come in. Is Bill around? Yeah, he's upstairs. Bill, you've got a visitor. Come on through. Thanks. We're having a dress rehearsal. Very nice. Oh, this isn't a wedding penny. My wedding penny's lace trimmed with appliqued flowers. Hey, well, every condemned man has a last wish, don't he? Can I get married in my overalls? Certainly. If you can find a bride that'll have you. But if it's me you want to marry, it's a new suit, a new shirt and a new tie. I ask you, Brian, is it worth it? What can I do for you, then? I wasn't absolutely honest with you when you phoned up at Dennis Hound about your Kevin. He's not all right. Look, there's no right to be wrong or out like that, but... Well, he slept in the garage last night in the back of a car. And I don't know where he's sleeping tonight. He told me about the row. I don't want you to think I'm being nosy. No, 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 of course you're not. Only he's a good lad, and I wouldn't like him to do anything daft. Well, thanks for letting us know, Brian. Is he going to be in the galleys this after? Yeah, till we close. Is it all right if I come round and have a word with him? Yeah, of course it is. Right. Oh, thank you. Thanks, bye. See you, cop. There is a bright side. You're getting married to a very nice girl. Thank heavens for small mercies. Oh, hello, Mr. Whitefield. Do come in. Thank you. Oh, do you mind if I leave me back for you? Sure, oh, baby. Some people. Oh, no, no, I don't mind at all. It's perfectly all right. Uh, mind you, I think I ought to warn you. Not that it's that kind of neighbourhood. It's not by any means, but, uh, well, children are the same everywhere, aren't they? And it pays to be careful. I chain it up. I always padlock my back wheel. Oh, very wise. Now, uh, do sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I, uh, I take it you wouldn't say no to a cup of tea? I never have and I never will, Mrs Ogden. Right, well, keep your minute. Uh, 
minute. Milk and sugar. Please. Just one spoonful of sugar. Oh, right. Now then, I, uh, I won't stir it for you. Because they do say if you stir somebody else's tea for them, it means you're going to have an argument. And we don't want one of them so soon in our acquaintance, or do we? <laughs> we don't know. Oh, uh, do help yourself to the bourbon creams. <clears throat> now, um, I've given the matter a great deal of thought. And I think we could be very well suited. There's just one or two things, though. Um, you said you worked for... Um... British Rail. Piccadilly ticket office. Oh, yes. Must be very interesting. And uh, do you have any immediate family? I'm not married. I never have been. Oh. I don't think anybody would have me. Oh, I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> my, uh, my mother died not long since. She was ill for a time, a long time. Oh. Well, then, you didn't see much of the house last time you came, so uh, when you finish your tea, I'll show you the accommodation available. After all... You might not want me. Oh, I'm sure I will, Mrs. Ogden. I'm sure I will. Can you spare a minute? I'm a bit pushed. Now, come on, you're not that pushed. Look, I've got something I want you to know. And seeing as you've been playing silly beggars, I thought it'd best if I come round here. Look, I understand why you don't want to come to Southampton with us. You've got your mates here and, and your job. Well, I accept it. So why are we at each other's throats? Just because I'm getting married doesn't mean we, we can't be pals. Well, say something, for God's sake. I've no to say. I'm all right. Oh, aye, right. and where are you going to be sleeping tonight in the back of this motor again? I'm stopping at one of my mates. Look, come on, Kev. Whatever's wrong, let's sort it out. But I'll have this finish for five. Hiya. Hi. Thanks very much. I've got a son of my own, you know. It's very comfortable, Mrs. Ogden. Oh. It's very comfortable indeed. There is just one thing. Oh, yes. If I take the room, would you mind if I put one or two shelves up? I'd take them down again if I left, or leave them up, whichever you prefer. No, no, I don't mind at all. Only I've got quite a lot of books, you see, mainly about railways. It's my hobby as well as my occupation. Oh, must be very nice for you. It's very interesting infrastructure, the railways. It's very complicated. I see. Mm. Well, now, uh, you think it's over for a day or two, and then uh, I'll give you a ring. Only I'm not on the phone yet. Well, neither am I, I'm afraid. Well, I meant at work. I give you a ring at work. Oh, uh, well, I'd rather you didn't. They're not too struck on us receiving personal calls. Oh. And anyhow, do we need to wait? I'm, I'm very, very taken by the terms and everything, if you're willing to have me. Well, yes, perfectly happy. <laughs> well, shall we say, uh, Wednesday for moving in, then? Yes. Yes, Wednesday will be very suitable. Well, then. Welcome to number 13, Coronation Street. Thank you, Mrs Ogden. You know what, Betty? What? I'm going to have to stop playing that curly. He's too good. I have to keep buying him pints. Could be worse, love it. Could be somebody you didn't like. <laughs> very true, Betty. Very mm. true. Hey, Kev, do you want one? I'll have half. And a half for Kev, please. Right. Why has he got his old all? I don't know, lovey. Hey, hey. Why's the lad in here with his old all? This one wants to know. He's selling brushes. He's never. What do you ask questions for if you don't believe the answers? Kev. You sure? Your mum and dad don't mind? Great. We're all night away. Yeah, go for a game of snooker or something. Okay, see you then in a bit. Ta-da. You coming home? No. I've told you I'm stopping at my mates. Get off! What are we playing silly devils for? For Pete's sake, I'm getting married on Wednesday. I know. You've got enough to worry about, haven't you? Without bothering your head over me. Kev? Oh, Kev! Kevin! What's wrong with your Kevin, Mr. Webster? You looking for a thick ear, lad? You're up 
up soon. Got a lot to do. I bet Elaine won't let you clean your shoes in the living room. No, we'll have to see, won't we? Anyway, I'm only polishing them. What have you had for your breakfast? I just had a cup of tea and a slice of toast. You're feeling all right, aren't you? Of course I am. Good. We don't want you being poorly. Not today. You've got to be in the pink today. How about your nerves? My nerves? Well, you're not like having second thoughts or anything, are you? Getting cold feet. I mean, it's a big step you're taking, you know, Dad. Marriage is. It's not just your future at stake here, but Elaine's as well. And now's the time to save, you're not too sure. We're too late in another four hours. We don't want you becoming a divorce statistic. Belt up, Debbie. Seriously. Are you dead happy? I call tingly inside. Yeah, I am. I just wish... Kevin will be at the wedding, Dad. I'm sure he will. He couldn't not come. He couldn't. Fine. What are you doing here? Work here, remember? But what about it? Are you really not going to the wedding? I told you it wasn't! It's your dad's wedding, Kevin! Exactly! It's what he wants! You can tell he's a gentleman. How can you tell that, Hilda? I thought one or two fellas were gents in my time and they turn out to be rat-faced rattlesnakes. Ah, oh, but that's the kind of man you attract, if you don't mind me saying so. Thanks very much. No, Mr Wakefield's a very nice man. Quiet and polite. Cleaning his habits, too, I hope. I mean, he's not likely to blow his nose on your curtains. Keeps his nails very clean. I did notice that. And he's moving in at dinner time, is he? Yeah, everything's ready for him. I got him a little bedside lamp for if he wants to read in bed. Looks like he's a big reader. Does he? Mm. And I put a bottle in his bed. Well, it gets very cold in that back bedroom, you know. I wonder, should I get him a radiator? Don't overdo it, Tilda Cock. I mean, you shouldn't spoil lodgers if they start thinking that your home's their own. And then they're roaming about in their stocking feet and rolling on drunk. You don't want that, do you? Oh, I can't see Mr Wakefield doing any of that. Oh, definitely not. Did anyone ever tell you you're a fine figure of a woman, Bet? All the time. In fact, I'm bored to death with folk keep telling me. You'll make a fantastic landlady. Do you know that? Of course. In fact, I'm surprised you've not had your own pub before now. Well, I never felt the need to. Always been the star attraction here. Yeah. We're birds of a feather, eh? You and me. Do you reckon? Oh, yeah, we've got lots in common. I mean, position, responsibility, a future. Hmm? It's changed our relationship. I mean, don't you feel that it has? Not really, no. Oh, I do. And I think we ought to celebrate that fact. Would you care to come out for a meal with me sometime? Well... No, it's all right. I'll fix it with Betty for the pair of us to have the night off together. All right. All right. We could talk shop. I could put you wise to one or two wrinkles. Hmm? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Of course you would. <laughs> have you tried to make him change his mind? Hard enough. How hard? I've told him I think he should go. What else can I do? Make him go. Force him. How can I? Oh, silly. He's going to ruin the day for them, you know. And he regret for the rest of his life. Do you think he'll listen to me? He might. Right. I'm off, Kevin, to watch the wedding. No. Oh, come on, Kevin. Look, come with me, eh? I'll wait for you to get changed. It's not too late. Sorry. Kevin! You're being stupid! Blast! That's the third time this morning you've taken the skin off your fingers. Is it? You flaming know it is. We all have accidents. Kevin. What? You like your dad, don't you? I did. You like him until he did something you don't agree with. Don't like. Is that what you're saying? He can do what he likes for me forever. But up to this, up to him getting married to Elaine, he's, he's looked after you. He's been a good mate. Has he? Yeah, of course he has. And he steps out of line once, just once, and bingo. 
That's it, so far as you're concerned. It's bye-bye, Dad. He's breaking us up, innit? Breaking the family up just because he fancies some woman. You're the one that's breaking the family up today, mate. Look, so you reckon he's letting you down? He has let us down. He said he'd look after us when my mum died. He promised us. But he has looked after you. No, he hasn't. He's splitting us up. Don't you think you owe him today? No. I owe him nothing after what he's done. Well, I think you do. And I think you know you do. I used to fall out with my dad. I wouldn't have done this to him, never. He hasn't deserved it, Kevin, honest. He's entitled to a life too. Do you think I made enough sandwiches? Well, if you haven't, we can make some more. Here, can you fix this for me? You know, I think you're too young to be getting married. Yes, I am, yeah. I mean, has anybody ever told you, well, uh, you know, the facts are lie? What do you mean, like if you stand on one leg and somebody pushes you, you fall over? <laughs> <laughs> you look very handsome. Elaine's a very lucky lady. Of course she is. Who do you think that is? It can't be our care. Flipping heck, have you seen time? It'll be Elaine and Percy. I'll go. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm looking for a missing bridegroom. <laughs> it's coming, love. We're all ready. Where's Percy? Phone needs to see where the taxi is. It's not that way, is it? You know that, I know that. But you know Uncle Percy is organising this wedding like it was the second front. Hiya. Oh, you look smashing, love, doesn't she, Bill? I'll tell you something, you don't look too bad yourself. Thank you. I was wondering when you were going to notice. I don't suppose Kevin's come. No, there's no sign of him yet. I am sorry, love. Well, I think he's a right, right. That'll do, a... Debbie. He thinks he's got his reasons. Let's leave it at that. Well, he's not going to spoil my day. I was neither, are you, Lane? Right, let's have you on parade. Car's waiting. Well, it wasn't a minute ago, Uncle Percy. Well, everything's time to the minute, isn't it? That's the only way to run these things. Unless you want a shambles. It's all right, Percy. We're all ready. Come on, love. Unless you've changed your mind. <laughs> I have had another offer, actually. Are oh, your brother not attending? I don't look like it. Typical. Heroes to yobbles in two generations. Now, remember what I told you. Start as you mean to go on. You're the landlady, and don't forget to charge him for use at Cruet. Oh, don't be said that. <laughs> use at Cruet? What's all that about? Well, landladies used to charge for the use of the salt and pepper pot and all that, didn't they, Betty? Oh, they did that, yeah. She remembers it, don't you? I didn't know what you just told me. <laughs> she laughed it all. Oh, you're going to start throwing your weight around, are you, when uh, you take over, like, making big changes? Well, nothing you can put your finger on, just the tone will be different. Oh, you mean it'd be an even rougher boozer, eh? Watch it, Michael. Don't forget I shall have the power of drink and thirst around here. You wouldn't dare ban me. I'm your best customer. Besides that, you're wild about me. Have you got something going with him? Passion under the bridge, Frank. Oh, yeah. There's only one thing older than an ex, and that's the Mary Rose, eh? You could be right. <laughs> yeah, it's the new love bug just around the corner what's interesting. <laughs> I've been thinking. Have you? Now, it's not uh, signed and sealed yet. I mean, you being the manager, I mean, not till you've been on this course, like. But there's nothing to say you shouldn't move in here in the meantime, is there? But Frankie, you're living here. Exactly. <laughs> and I could switch the light out behind us, couldn't I? After we get back from the meal. Hey, I saw that. Have you been encouraging him? No, I have not. Trouble with you is, you don't know when you are. Encouraging fellas, I mean. I have not been encouraging him, Betty, on my honour. He seems to think he's onto a good thing, though. Get away. Can we go in? Hang on, hang on. The photographer's not here. What do you think of us when we come out, can't he? You can never defend on Simmy. Come on, let's get in. Come on, look. 
Cut it a bit fine, son. Looks like it. <laughs> well, jump to it now, we are here. We're very near our ETA. Hey? <sighs> Come on then. Oh, did not come on your bag? Oh, just listen to me. How could you ride a bag carrying a suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> I left it at work. I came on bus. Oh, you're lucky to get here then. I usually manage to just miss one. I've got a 12.20. Oh. <laughs> uh, shall I take my case up? No, you can leave it here for now. Uh, I've done your bag to eat. Lunch. Well, that's if you haven't eaten already. No, but you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, it's no bother. Uh, come on through. Thanks very much. Where'd you get that tie from? You all right, Kevin? Yeah, great. Thank you. Didn't have one of my own. <laughs> 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 well, watch it a bit in the field, yeah. Right, well, don't get over in that corner. Nice and tight. I want to take a group, you see. Get over there, that's it. Ooh, it looks like a bag of chips. I just want to get a nice group. Excuse me, Dad. I'd like the bride and the groom on their own. I just want a family group. Oh, man, have what you want when I've finished, all right? I can't wait for you to get steam up in that camera. I've got two more weddings this afternoon. You better let him, Percy. His time's costing us money. Well, the only hope his fault is they're better than his manners, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you glad you changed your mind? It's all down to you, Brian. Oh, all right, come on. Just, just stay in the group. Let's have a nice group shot. Right, nice big smiles now. Ah, that's lovely. All right, one more. <laughs> <laughs> Did you used to have a monkey parade here in Weatherfield? <laughs> we did that, yeah. A monkey parade? What's that? Well, it's where all boys and girls used to walk up and down the street eyeing one another. Usually in the dark, in the winter. Eyeing one another, eh? Mm. Sounds very depraved to me. <laughs> oh, was in them days, lovely. No, I only went once and my father followed me. Well, he caught me talking to this young lad and he got right long hair and a woolen shirt. And my dad said he looked like a communist, so he took me home. <laughs> <laughs> Deirdre not on dinner this week? I uh, know she's gone to the wedding. Oh, yeah. How do some women get blokes to actually propose to them? It's a mystery to me. It's easy for a start. They wear dinky little earrings instead of those light fittings you've got. I won't keep warning you, Michael. I shall only allow crawlers and flatterers in here. <laughs> I wonder. What? If being the boss will change her. Bound to. Did me. For the better? Oh, yeah. Really? I'll get it. I'll get on it. Rob's return. Speaking. Oh, good morning, Mr. Warner. Next week? Oh, no. You don't let the grass grow under your feet, do you? No, next week will be fine. The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm neither fish nor fowl at the moment, am I? Do you want me to come down and pick them up? No trouble. <coughs> I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. Bye. Looks like it was good news, whatever it was. Perfect, Betty. Yeah. 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 It's a wish. We didn't get any hush. We didn't think anybody liked it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think the occasion demands a little speech. I mean, even though it's not exactly a proper wedding. Well, I hope it is, because I've booked a double room for tonight. <laughs> of course it's a proper wedding, Uncle Percy. I mean, in a church and that. Oh. And a substitute for the bride's father, it's my duty to say a few words. A few. Debbie? <laughs> I don't think we want any speeches, Uncle Percy. In my opinion, you're going to get one. Here, here. Oh, I wish you'd hurry up. I want to get back to work. <laughs> In my opinion, Bill's a very lucky man getting her lane. And I hope he realises it. And I hope he looks after her, which I think he will. Is that it? Yes, yeah, said everything, doesn't it? Absolutely. 
So let's read our glasses. Let's read our glasses. Uh, good health and happiness to you both. Yeah. Cheers. Good health and happiness. Cheers. 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 It's all the best. Cheers. Mm. Yes, I do realise I'm a very lucky man. And I'll do my best to look after her. And I'll see you does, Uncle Percy. Yeah. Okay, oh, I hope she don't stop it. <laughs> you have me crying and ruining me makeup. Oh, no, don't worry, love. I had a scribe during the service. Well, ourselves yeah. to more grub. We don't want anything left that we don't no, need to eat it. Well, I tell you what, I'll buy That's what's left off you and sell it at the cafe. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have another chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Take one off around. I love this stuff. No, no, you don't need that. You all right, son? Yeah. Where'd you get that tie from? It's Brian's. Do you know you've know. made me day? Do you know that? Went quite well, didn't it, the wedding? Yeah, great. What are your plans then? Plans? Well, it's, it's still not too late. I'm stopping here, Dad. Of course, yeah. But where? Where are you stopping? Well, stopped at Steve Moston last night. And what's wrong with stopping here? Till the place is sold. Nothing. It's yours then. You're in charge. Till we get a buyer. Right. Yes, it and if you do decide at any time you want to follow on, don't be proud. Yeah. You're right, you two. Yeah, we're fine, that was some. And is uh, is this your only hobby then? Trains? Yes. Oh, and all these books are about railways, are they? Afraid so. Hey, you must know an awful lot about it all. Oh, well, there's a lot to know. They changed the world, railways. Opened it up. Yeah, I suppose they did. Like taking me to land, wouldn't they, on my holidays? <laughs> exactly. Well, now, are you sure you've had enough to eat? More than enough. I don't usually eat lunches. Oh, well, I've got some nice haddock for your tea, if that's all right. Fine. Now, if there's anything, uh, anything special in the food line you like, you know, anything you're particularly fond of, don't be afraid to ask. Well, I like most things. Oh, you like me late husband for that, then. I used to tell him it wasn't a stomach he had. It was more like a pit shaft. <laughs> uh, well, I'll have to be going, getting back to work. Oh, yes, of course. Now, you'll have to watch that, me blathering on. <laughs> oh, there is just one thing. I've, uh, I've got your rent book. A rent book? Yes, well, then I thought we could keep a proper account of your payments, like. I didn't have one for my other lodger, but I thought you might like one. I think a rent book's for someone who's actually renting a property, Mrs Ogden. A house or rooms. I'm just a... A paying guest? Yeah, so... Oh, so you don't think a rent book's required, then? If you want to keep a record, I don't see why you shouldn't use it. Yes, well, I think I'd prefer that. Then we both know where we are. Right, I'll uh, be on my way then. Yes, well, what time can I expect you back for your tea? About half past five. Oh, right, I'll have it ready. Unless you prefer to eat later. I mean, I don't mind whatever you want. Half past five's perfect. Oh, right. <laughs> Bye then. Cheerio, Mrs. Ogden. Did you wash your hands before you come in here? Yeah, why? Nothing, just checking. <laughs> well, if I hadn't, it's good clean muck. Did I say it wasn't? <laughs> Have you got your hearing aid in today, Betty? Do that loud. Switch on. This could tickle you. Oh. Have you got a minute, please, Frank? <laughs> she can't leave me alone. <laughs> yes, darling? About what you were saying yeah, this morning. Sure. Aren't you moving in here? Yes. You can't wait. That's what you're going to say, isn't it, eh? <laughs> well, be my guest. When opportunity knocks, dash to the door, that's what I always say. Oh, we'll talk about a little love nest, eh? <laughs> we'll have smoke coming out of this boozer bet you and me. Just you wait and see, darling. <laughs> In fact, I'll be surprised if you spend much time on your feet, myself. There's only one snag, Frankie. What's that? I won't be here. You what? I'm going on that training course next week. The brewery rang. Sorry, love bus. Excuse me. <laughs> I think I'll play golf this afternoon. Have all the workers sweat and make a fortune for you? No sweat for them, mate. They won't know about it. Or on the other hand, I could phone this little bird that keeps phoning me. Sounds very interesting. Problem to being a businessman, eh? You have no conception of the decisions I can make. Oh, yeah. mm. 
What's that for? That is for being a very clever husband. Yeah, I am pretty smart, aren't I? Yeah. yeah how'd it go? <laughs> it was a perfect wedding, thanks to you. Well, darling, Kev. I'll see you. Will you miss me? No. Well, I'll miss you. I mean, there'll be nobody there to get on my nerves, will there? You'll get used to it. I'll be a southerner, won't I? Yeah, you will. Look after yourself, eh? And don't do anything daft. And don't let Roberta Longworth twist you around a little finger. And if you do ever decide to come down to Southampton, well, don't come visiting us. <laughs> See you, Kel. Right, you've got 29 minutes before your train goes. That's 10 minutes to get to the station and 5 minutes to get your tickets. Don't worry, Percy, we'll make it. Stop worrying, Uncle Percy. Oh, well, I shan't be worried about you much longer. So, see you when I see you. Not the end of the world, you know, Southampton. Is it? Keep in touch. Don't burn the house down. Try not to. Be good then. See ya. Bye, Kevin. See ya. See ya. See ya. Bye. See ya. See ya. All the That's it. Hello. What's the damage? 49p, please. 49p. Pie. Talk about the last of the big spenders. How's it going anyway? Great. Hey, should have done it years ago. Done what? Got my dad married off again. And out from under my feet. I thought you were dead set against this wedding. Uh, that was before I had the house to myself. Uh, you can't whack it. I wouldn't get too keen on the idea if I were you. I reckon your dad might have something to say about that. He is trying to sell it, you know. Yeah, I know. Don't look like it'll be too long, neither. Got another couple coming along tonight. Have you heard from anyway, Elaine and your dad like? Ah, uh, Debbie rang up. Said they got there okay. Uh, Not since. Now she's one you will miss. Ah, uh, Debbie? Oh, yeah, like flipping toothache. Yeah, till it comes to the cleaning and washing. <laughs> what cleaning and washing? <laughs> <laughs> See you. Fit for a king was that. Did you say something? I said that breakfast was fit for a king, Mrs. Ogden. You've certainly got away with an egg and a couple of rashes of streaky bacon. Oh. Well, I never did have no complaints in that department, as you toast. Not for me, thanks. If you eat another crumb, I'll burst. Oh, oh well, if you're sure. <laughs> Positive. That was one thing I always insisted on with my late husband, you know. He never left the house without he had a full be <laughs> without a good breakfast inside him. Stoked him up for the day, did that. Well, he needed it, you know, being out in all weathers. Oh, not that you don't, of course. I mean, working in an office. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, Mrs. Sogan. The most important meal of the day is breakfast. Are you uh, always in the booking office, then? Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, must be very interesting, that. I mean, especially for you, being so interested in trains, like. Oh, yeah, it is. Mind you, it's not like it was in the old days. Old days? The great days of steam, Mrs Ogden. Smoke hanging in the air, the noise. There's something about a steam loco. Oh, you're right there. They were slow, mucky and freezing. Not to an enthusiast, Mrs Ogden, believe me. Oh. Well, no. <laughs> and uh, you've always been at Piccadilly, have you? Uh, but no, not always. Mm -hmm. it, and I'll not be there much longer if I don't get my skates on. Oh, I'll get you sandwiches. I've got you a nice bit of boiled ham. You did say you like boiled ham. My favourite. Oh. You know, I can still hardly believe me good fortune. How do you mean? Finding such a homely place as this. Oh, oh hello. Uh, is Gloria there, please? Uh, Gloria Todd. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Frank Harvey. Yes, yes, I'll hang on. Yeah. Gloria! Oh, <laughs> I see. Uh, well, uh, when do you expect her back in? Oh, I see. Uh, no, no. No message. No, I'll, uh, I'll ring back later. Yeah. Thanks. Oh. Oh, where 
What do you reckon she's got to, then? Well, I don't know. I'm either just whipping creeper, am I? Well, it's not like her to be late. Ah, you are. She'll be late for her own funeral, her, if nobody clocks her in. Eh, you didn't clock her in this morning, did you? No, I didn't. And it's a flaming good job I didn't, and I'll... I'd have been right in it. Well, I don't reckon she's coming in myself. Hmm. Well, she's picked a good day, hasn't she? Up to armpits in here. Ball's been buzzing round like a flaming wasp in there. Morning. 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 Hey, Emily. You don't have to have up from either, do you? As a matter of fact, I have. Her husband's just been on the phone. It seems she's picked up this flu bug that's going around. That's all we need, isn't it? Oh. She could be off all week, I'm afraid. All week? But jammy devil. Jammy? You don't reckon she's enjoying it, dear? Do you know, Vera, I sometimes wonder why you bother coming here at all, honest, I do. You've never stopped morning since you set foot through that door. Well, I hate Monday morning. You hate every flipping morning. Hey, that's not fair, either. No, it isn't. I'm not that gone on afternoons, Martha. <laughs> Anything there you can't handle? No, I don't think so. There are a couple of letters you ought to see, but nothing urgent. Oh, well, I'd better make a move, then. Well, I'll say one thing to that Christine Millward. Mm -hmm. She's persistent, if nothing else. Christine Millward? The designer. The one who keeps trying to get you on the phone with a letter from her. She obviously feels she's getting nowhere telephoning. She wants to make an appointment to see you. <laughs> She'll be lucky. Oh, she seems to think she's got something worth discussing with you. They all have, Emily. They walk out of art school with wide-eyed idealism and think they're going to revolutionise the fashion world. Look, uh, just write to her, say, uh, thank you, but no thanks, OK? If you say so. I do. Emily, you haven't seen the Harrison file, have you? Oh, did you bring it back? Bring it back. Well, I think it was among those you took home with you last night. Well, do you ever get the feeling it's going to be one of those days? Frequently. Hey, you don't have to wait for me to turn up, you know, before you can make a start. Shan't be upset. I'll just have me five minutes, Betty. Yeah, so notice. Hey, now, hang on a minute. What? Now, let's get one thing straight, shall we, Betty? Mm -hmm. Now, you may have been round here longer than the cracks in that bar top, but until Beck gets back, I am the boss. Oh, don't worry, love. I know who the chief is round here. Mm. I just happen to have noticed that we're a little bit short on the Indians and all. Unless, of course, you're going to knock us cork leg by saying you've taken somebody on. Oh, give us a chance, Betty. I thought so. Well, when have I had time? Now, come on, be fair. Me be fair? You've known that Bet was going to go swanning off to Buxton on this management course ever since you moved in here. You didn't have to wait until she'd gone, did you? Now, look. Look, Betty. This isn't getting us anywhere, is it? You do realise, don't you, that there's not going to be any bar food. Hey, now, come on. I am not the genie of the flaming lamp, you know. I can't be in there getting the food. And out here see to the bar as well. Now, come on. All right, all right, Betty. You've made your point. You can leave the bar to me. Oh... Look, we can't go on like this. You'll have to get somebody in. Otherwise, I mean, you're going to be on your own. I'm warning you. <laughs> ah, and I will, Betty, love. It's all in hand, believe me. <laughs> I don't suppose you can squeeze another cup, could you? I'm afraid no. I've let this one go cold. Oh. What, after all she stuff? You'll be lucky. <laughs> Oh, me! Yeah, you, I'm surprised you don't look like a flipping tea bag. <laughs> and you can shut your trap for now. Never said a word. I'll take it, the answer's no. Oh, well. Uh, not to worry. I don't suppose I'll die of dehydration before no. lunchtime. Well, look, I can always throw up another pot, you know. What took a minute? No, it doesn't matter, really, it doesn't. Hey, go on, you're entitled to your tea break, the same as the rest of us. Yeah. Well, not quite the same as the rest of you. Eh? Well, by my reckoning, you should have been back at work five minutes ago. Well, by my reckoning, well, we're five minutes late starting anyway, because of Ida. She was supposed to be milking, wasn't she, but she hadn't come in, has she? All right, Vera, but if you go and brew up again, you'll be ten minutes late starting, won't you? And if that happened, I don't think I'd be very popular with Mr. Baldwin. I'll get it. No, it doesn't matter. I'm going back anyway. Oh, right. Right. Oh. Hmm. Baldwin's casuals. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm afraid you couldn't speak to Mr. Baldwin. He isn't here just now. Well, I'm sorry, it's difficult to say what time you'll be back. Who's calling? Oh, I see. Yes, Mrs. Millwood, Mr. Baldwin did see your letter. There'll be a reply in the post to you tonight. Well, no, I'm afraid he can't see you. He is very busy just now. Yes, I'll... I'll tell him you phoned. Goodbye. 
Right, come on, you. What if Yangi Town was long, not be worth going back again? Oh. It'd be dinner time. Hey, she's got a part, you know. Sure. I mean, what if she's I mean, you, you and all be here, oh, right? Okay. Do you know you'll even get a sound like playing in ball with well, They're all the same, aren't they? Oh, oh wow. Bosses, flipping slave drivers, a lot of them. Hmm. Well, I know one who will want to be in anyway. Oh, I? Yeah, hard oh, yeah. <laughs> You're Jack, a boss? Are we talking about the same fella? <laughs> yes, we are. Look, if that brewery aren't being so flaming biased, our Jack could have been boss at Rovers by now, couldn't they? Oh, you're not still going on about that, Vera. <laughs> well, why shouldn't I, eh? Our Jack have never good a boss as Bet Lynch any, didn't we? Hey, it's my other point there, you know, Ivy. You just spend more time in there than she does. <laughs> hey, and left the lift, you, eh? He never seriously reckoned that he were your chance, though, Vera, not your Jack. Well, why not? Yeah, why not? Oh, He's done more than most, aren't he? He's push Newton and Ridley profits right through the roof, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Betty, love, these three fellas here could be dying of thirst. Hey, you yell at me once more, Jack Douglas, and I'll guarantee it. I'm not a flipping octopus, you know. Right, what do you want before I change my mind? Set him up again. Uh, just half of me. I didn't hear you say just half, any chance did I? No, you didn't. I'll tell you what, you won't get many drunks in here. Eh? Hey? The time it takes to get served. You do want this all over your head, don't you? Well, you are a bit pushed, aren't you? One of us is lovely, that's for sure. Well, I don't see what the problem is. I thought barmaids were ten a penny. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, no, not like you, like casual staff. Don't tell me, tell him. I'll tell you what, if I were running this place, I wouldn't have you run on your fe off your feet, Betsy. No chance. I believe you and all. You wouldn't be able to move behind that bar for bodies, would you? All redheads, under 30, and not a brain between them. Well, I wouldn't have folk fighting, queuing up to get rid of the brass. Were you serious? Serious? When you applied to take over this place? Of course we're serious. Right up my street, this, isn't it? He's right, you know, Curly. I mean, if ever there was a face born to grin at you from over the bar top, he's got it. <laughs> the only problem is, he's more used to the brewery than this side of the bar. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, because it would touch and go whether I got this place or not. What, you were on the shortlist? Close, Curly. I got a letter, didn't I? Letter? What letter? From the brewery. Seeing that they give my application careful consideration, careful, mind you, and while I wasn't in with a shout this time... Hey, you could just imagine the manager's director dictating... Oh, <laughs> words to that effect. They'd keep my name on file, and if out more suitable come up, then they'd invite me to kind of apply again, like. So, if he seems to be propping up the bar a bit more than usual, he's not skiving off. He's just doing a bit of field study, isn't he? While he waits from the call from on high. Am I right, Dad? I couldn't have said that better myself, son. All right, Bessie, look. No, I'm not. Good girl. Look, uh... Now the rush is over, I think I'll nip out for ten minutes. Nip out? You're joking. Ten minutes, not a minute longer. Listen, if you think I'm stopping behind this bar on my own, well, you've got swamming up. Betty, love, you do want me to get somebody else in here now, don't you? Is that where you're going? Ten minutes. See ya. Pint, please, Betty. Oh, just a minute, love it. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Alf. You're a gent. Don't mention it. I wonder where you've been, actually. You've not done them around here for weeks. Ah, pressure of business. You know how it is, but never fret. I'll be getting down here to you sometime today. Hey, hey, hang on a minute. You mean that water's not for our windows? Well, I didn't say it was, did I? Well, I've got a few houses to do down Viaduct Street, but there's nobody in down there. But I think... Hey, yeah. cheeky monkey! Hey, right, are you off, then? Ah, I won't be very long, though. Hey, and if Jack Duckworth sticks his nose around that door again, ask you for walk to make sure his our windows is done, <laughs> if you have to time to drain pipe. <laughs> Ta Hello. Hello, Al. Hi. Hello. Go on. What we missed off this time? Pardon? Your order. Oh, you haven't forgotten anything. It's me. Honestly, I've got a memory like a sieve oh. these days. Join the club. <laughs> Go on, what is it this time? Tea bags and baked beans. And I'd better have a large tin. Norman would live on them if I let him. He's not the only one. Oh? His mate's as bad, young Kevin. In fact, if what he's bought in here this week is anything to go by, he is living on them. How's he coping, as he said? Well, he reckons he's doing all right. You don't sound so sure. We'll have to see how he feels when the house goes, won't we? I mean, life's not exactly going to be a bed of roses for him then, is it? Living in digs, his family 200 miles away. Anyway, anything else, love? Excuse me, lads. Hi, lads. Hello. There you are, Doc. Thanks, Betty, love. Yeah. Don't know how you do it for the money. <laughs> I don't know how I do it at all. I must be soft in the head. Ten minutes, he said, and I believed him. Phyllis Frank. Who else? Who is he? he? Well, he's getting help. He says that why couldn't use the phone like anybody else? <laughs> help? Yeah. <laughs> Won't go building your notes too high if I was you. Hey, hey, hey. Why? I can't see those women in the betting shop being much easier, better. The betting shop? That's where he was going when I saw him last. Cheers. Cheers. 
Can I have a large child to take out, please? Certainly, love. You'll you settling in then, Hilda? Oh, yes. He felt it all oh, yep. as soon as he walked through the door. You're keeping him under wraps, aren't you? Hey? Oh, we're not seeing a lot of him yet, have we? Oh, well, that's because he's quite happy where he is, Tar, very much. No, he's a bit of a home bird, is Mr Wakefield. He'd sooner stop in with one of his railway books than be propping up some bar. He'll make himself known when he's good and ready. Mm, keeps himself to himself like, does he? Yes, he does, and that suits me fine. It's a pity more folk weren't like that round here. Oh, hey. Now, I wanted a word with you as it happens. Me? Yes, about your dad's house. Oh, yeah? What about it? Well, I just wanted to make sure you'd be choosy about who you're selling to. You know, you can so easily lower the tone of a neighbourhood and, well, once that starts, heaven knows where it'll end. Oh, it'll be choosy, all right, will me, Dad? Oh, I'm very pleased to hear it. The first person I come up with the money in the sticker that emits, and it's theirs. Oh, now, hang on a minute. I'm sorry, Mrs Ogden, but it does happen to be his house and it does happen to need the cash. So it looks as if we have to keep us fingers crossed, does it? Yeah. Well, so very much both of you, for now. Oh, oh sorry, I'll deliver after Thank you. you. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me, lads. Oh, you've found your way back then, have you? <laughs> Sorry, Betty, love. Only I bumped into this fella. <laughs> Don't worry about it, love. Still, I mean, as long as you found somebody to be back a bar with me, you know, it's time well spent, isn't it? <laughs> well? Well, it's uh, not that easy, is it? Not to find the right type of person. No, I don't suppose it is. Especially when they're, they're running at Adock Park or Doncaster or somewhere. You've never been looking for staff. You've been at that betting shop. All right, I might have just called him while I was out, but that doesn't mean to say I haven't got somebody lined up now, does it? Have you? One phone call this afternoon, Betty, and we have cracked it. <laughs> On my way, Squire. Is that all time it is? Yes, it is. You've got half an hour to go yet. Oh. Do you know it feels like a fortnight since I come through that door this morning? Yeah, it does to me and all. I've had to listen to your moaning all day. We well, don't feel like working winter, do you? Not when it's dark outside. It hasn't been dark all morning, dearie. Mm. Well, it might as well have been for all we know. Cooked up in here all day. We're like flaming battery ends, aren't uh, we? No, not quite, because the battery and only cackles when it comes up with guns. <laughs> Can I help you? I was looking for Mr. Baldwin. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I'm afraid he's not here. He's not back yet? No, he's not. In fact, we're not even sure if he'll make it back for tonight. No, but I'll bet you a pound for a pinch of muck will be back in time to be propping that bar up across the lake on half five. Bar? Yeah, Rovers, Cross Road. Ah, oh, I see. Well, thanks very much. Uh, is there anything I can do, uh, at Miss? Mrs. Mrs. Millwood? Uh, no, I don't think so. Thanks all the same. It was Mr. Baldwin I wanted to see. Oh, well, uh, uh, when I see him, I'll tell him you've called, eh? Hey, listen, uh, yeah, I'm over at the Rover's Return at the moment, you know, relief manager, and I just happened to find that I'm desperate for extra bar staff, and knowing how well you and me got on in the past, I... <laughs> yeah. So how are you fixed, eh? Well, as soon as possible, like tomorrow. Oh, I see. Well, when will you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, could you give us a bell as soon as you do now? Good girl. Fringe benefits? Of course. Why do you think I called you? <laughs> I'll see you, kid. Yeah, fine now. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> well? I think we've cracked it, Betty. <clears throat> you think? Just waiting for confirmation. Look, it's not confirmation I'm interested in. It's another pair of hands. And that's what you all have. I told you. Trust your Uncle Frank. <laughs> what party? Well, it's about time, innit? I mean, how long is it since we've had a few birds round, a bit of music and a bit of, uh, you know... No chance. What do you mean, no chance? After what happened last time? Nothing happened last time. Oh, no, only Mrs Bishop came in and caught us at it. At it? Didn't exactly make the Sunday papers, did it? Well, perhaps not, but there's no way Mrs Bishop will allow if the you kind of flash that you've got listen, in listen, you big soft lump. Well, you're on about a party. I know I'm on about a party, but nobody mentioned Mrs. Bishop until you started chucking your fourth pen up with him. Well, where then? Look, a certain pan of a mate of ours who's found himself with vacant possession. Kevin, who else? When? Well, don't know yet. I mean, 
There's still a few minor details to be sorted out, isn't there? Like what? Like I haven't told him yet. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, just an orange juice, please. Right, love. Anything else? No, thanks. That's £30 for you, please, love. Thank you. Uh, actually, there was something. Could you tell me if Mr Baldwin's been in tonight? Mr Baldwin from over the road. Along the bar, shall I tell him? No, no, it's all right. Thanks. Suit yourself, lovely. Uh, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, that's right. I uh, haven't had the pleasure. Well, that's hardly my fault. You're a very elusive man. Really? At least as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm still not with you. Chris. Chris Millwood. Chris Millwood. Um... Designer. Oh, that's right. So you're Christine Millwood. You look surprised. Well, to tell you the truth, you're not what I was expecting. And what were you expecting? Oh, some starry-eyed art student. Sorry to disappoint you. Well, you haven't. Well, I don't know what you wanted me for, but uh, it must be important for you to track me down here. Well, it is. To me, anyway. Have you got five minutes? What can I say? Yes. Let's uh, take the weight off our feet, shall we? <laughs> I don't know where they go, I'm afraid. You'll have to put them away. Oh, don't worry about that. It's very good of you to dry up for me. It's my pleasure. Pleasure doing pots? <laughs> well, perhaps pleasure isn't quite the right word. It's just something I've always done, that's all. Yeah, well, I suppose it's only natural when you live in a town. There was just uh, you and your mother, you said. That's right. Mm. She must have meant a lot to you. Yeah. She did. I seemed very empty without her when she... Well, passed on. Oh, I know what you mean. I felt exactly the same when Stan went. Like a pea rattling round on a drum. Still... This is my home, what me and Stan worked for all them years. It's a lovely little home, Mrs Ogden. You're very lucky. I couldn't have dreamed of keeping our place on, not after Mother had gone. How big was it? It's far too big for one person. They bought it over 30 years ago, you see. Ideal for a growing family, but when it got down to me on my own, the bills were terrifying. So I thought a comfy little bed sit would be just right. Then I saw your advert. You know, I still can't believe I've been so lucky, finding such a cosy little home from home. Oh, well, you just think on. Anything you want, you've only got to ask. Oh, within reason, of course. <laughs> and if you want to bring any of your mates round, you know, just feel free. Thanks, Mrs Ogden. You'll find folk round here are very friendly. The only one you've got to watch out for is that Vera Duckworth at number nine. Still, you'll find that out for yourself as soon as she opens her big mouth. <laughs> here, I tell you what. Now, why don't I take you down to the Rovers when I finish this lot? I could introduce you. Uh, well, that's very good of you. Right, you're on. I, I don't think so, not tonight. I'd, I'd love to go, but if it's all the same to you, some other time, perhaps. All I want to do this evening is put my feet up and relax with a book. I can't think of anywhere better to do it than here. Well, if you were earning a few bob, what do you want to give it up for? Because I don't think I'd make a successful designer and a good mum. Not at the same time. Oh, you got a family, have you? Just the one, Kate. She's six now. So you see, I'm not just a kid out of art school. No, nope, you're certainly not. I still don't understand why it was me you chose. I mean, there must have been hundreds of people you could have gone to. Oh, well, that's right. But like I said, Mr. Baldwin. Mike. Mike. I have been around. I'm not new to this business. And I know how important it is to find the right person to take up an idea, develop it, manufacture it. Not only do they have to be able to do the job, they have to have the capacity and the outlets and be prepared to take a bit of a gamble. And you thought I'd fit the bill? Well, I think so. Smallish factory, casual clothes, mainly denim, but flexible enough to switch some production to any new idea that may come along. Ah, providing it's the right one. Of course. Well, you've certainly done your homework, I'll give you that. I always do. So tell me, what's this new idea of yours that's going to revolutionise the fashion world? I didn't say that, but I do think that with my ideas and your backing, we could both cash in. Sounds interesting. I uh, could bring the designs out tomorrow. Twelve o'clock? On the dot. And now, look, I really am sorry for hounding you the way I did, but it did seem the only way. Believe you me, it is the only way. If you want anything in this world, you've got to go out and get it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wicked 
wicked morning. It's that nasty sort of driving rain that seems to come sideways at you. Mm. Ooh, you'd not get me out on that bike of yours in this, I'll tell you. <laughs> Still, I suppose that big cape of yours keeps you dry, doesn't it? Have you got somewhere to hang it up when you get to work? Because they take up a lot of room, them big capes, don't they? I think I might go up bus today if it's as bad as that. Yeah. Of course, you're in the dry once you get there, aren't you? Oh, you're best inside, you know. My stand used to say he wished he'd gone in for one of them careers where you're undercover. Well, all your professions, you know, solicitors and that, they're all inside, aren't they? Hmm. Hey, yeah, uh, haven't you best get going, Henry? It's nearly half past eight, you know. Oh, I saw it is, yeah, best be moving. Do you always have a nine o'clock start? You never have to go in early at all? Well, I mean, there's got to be somebody there to sell the tickets as soon as the trains start running, haven't there? Oh, I'm not in front ticket office, Mrs. Ogden, not anymore. No, I'm more one of the backroom boys these days. Oh. Oh, it must be fascinating, you know, all them trains going off all over the country. Must take a lot of planning. Well, it's just a job. Oh, well, of course, you're used to it. Still, I suppose every job's ordinary to them what have to do it. I take my cleaning. Be very strange to you, I dare say, but, well, to me, it's just work. <laughs> Would you sign the VAT return? It should have gone off a fortnight ago. I'm surprised the country hasn't ground to a halt. <laughs> that girl who was trying to get you, the designer, she was on the phone again yesterday, and I tried to put her off. I told you you were very busy, but she actually came round here just after you'd gone. I'm afraid she's very persistent. I found that out, too. She tracked me down to the Rovers. Heavens. Well, I didn't tell her how to find you, I assure you. How do you deal with people as pushy as that? Well, in her case, you give her all your attention, especially if she's good-looking. Well, you never know. Her designs might be worth looking at. Anyway, I've asked her to come and see me this morning, so when she arrives, don't chuck her out, OK? You're not telling me you can't get a barmaid for it. There's thousands of them out of work that cry them out for work. Oh, yes, yes, Betty Love, but it's getting the right type. Get mm. the wrong person and you could end up worse off. I'd risk that. I'm sick of running this pub single-handed. Single-handed? Aren't you forgetting me? No, I'm here because like, you're not here half the time. Because I'm trying to show my confidence in you, mm. Betty Love. Now, they tell you that in all the management courses. <coughs> Don't stand over your top-class workers. Mm. When you're here, I know the pub's in good hands. Won't be for much longer. You'll get some help. <laughs> I'm off. Betty Love, I have got my <coughs> sights set on the very person. Mm. I mean, that's the only reason for the delay. Now, trust me, believe me, it's all in hand. Now, I've got to get down that cellar, haven't I, eh? Put a fresh barrel on. Oh, Ooh, they'll tell you anything, won't they? Gee. Do you know, I asked him for floor cleaner two days ago. I said to him, give me the tools, I said, and I will finish the job. Good idea, Hilda. Well, finish the job. We're opening in ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, it would not be like this if Mrs. Walker was still here, would it? You're right, love. You wouldn't be stood still for one thing. No. I know there was someone's never got on with her, but, well, I speak as I find. Me and Mrs. Walker never had a crossword. Yes, well, if you could just And get you were things... a right-hand woman, weren't you? Oh. oh, I've heard her say many a time. Elizabeth... Always called you Elizabeth, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Elizabeth is my strong right arm, she'd say. I've heard her say that many a time to our Lady Vittler pals and that. Yeah. Well... Them days are gone now, Hilda Love. Yeah, and look at us now, eh? Mm. I mean, what sort of future have we got when Beth Lynch comes back off this training mm. course? Oh, you know me, Betty, I've always stuck up for her. Mm. But you can't tell me it's right putting her over us. Well, she does a fair share of work, doesn't she? More than I can say for some. Oh, in the past <laughs> she has, yeah. But you'll see. Give them a bit of power, and they're all the same. Oh, oh yeah. Um, and a bag of flour, please. Right. You're baking? Oh, I thought I'd make steak and kidney pie. Well, it's pie weather, isn't it? And Norman enjoys them. Yeah, steak and kidney pie, homemade. Angel food, that, isn't it? Can't you just tell by looking at him? Some people look like glue sniffers, some people look like dope fiends, but you know for sure, Alf's a pie freak. <laughs> chance will be a fine thing. When do I get a chance for homemade steak and kidney pie? I'll do you one if you like, Alf. Would you? Yes, of course, it's no trouble. Hey, right, you're on. Tell you what, I'll get the stuff and you do the making, eh? <laughs> hey, you made steak and kidney pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got a big tin of that meat dumpling stuff? Uh, yeah, we have some, haven't we? Uh, here we are. Yeah. That it? Yeah, for now. Cheers. Just tip this in a pan, can't you? I mean, you don't have to stand it in boiling water, they're out fancy, do you? Oh. 
Do you know what got that fancy, do you, Kevin? No, you just uh, pop it into a pan and heat it gently and, and keep stirring, oh, you know? Yeah, and a loaf as well. Deal. you Cheers. Oh, just right. That's fine. Now that he's on his own in that house, do you think he's eating properly? Well, no, shouldn't think he ever peels a potato or even considers a bit of green veg or fruit. No, if that's what you mean. Oh, dear, it's not a very good diet, is it? He's right, is the lad. He's learning to look after himself. It's a very hard world out there, you know. It's a jungle. If you don't learn to look after yourself, you get eaten. Yeah, OK, mate. Yeah. I'll leave it to you. See you. Hello again. Hello. They're the designs you were telling me about? Yes, I didn't know if you'd want to see everything I've been doing. Anyway, it's here. But the sportswear I was telling you about is up at the front. Look, darling, it's been one hell of a day. I've been at it since the crack of dawn. Are you asking me to come back this afternoon? No. no I'm asking you out to lunch. How are you fixed? Well, thanks very much. My pleasure. Right, the car's outside. Let's get in it before the phone starts ringing again, shall we? We can leave those here, Dylan. Well, don't you want to look at them over lunch? No, later. Let's not make business with pleasure. Hey, leave them here. Uh, I think I'll hang on to them if you don't mind. All right, suit yourself. Keep them at it, Ivy. Right, Mr. Owen. Look at him. All swagger when he's got a girl. Yeah, flashes her out with a gold so Yeah, she must be trying to sell him something. Ah. Well, she's no chance, has she? How do you mean? Well, you know what Baldwin's like, eh? He hates paying for it when he can get it for free. Ah! <laughs> hey, you love it. No, I bet Kevin Webster's not been in this dinner, has he? I've not seen him, no. Quiet today, isn't it? Stands need to be. <laughs> Don't say that, Betty. We need the custom. We need a barmaid. And I keep telling you, Betty, love, it's all in hand. Hey, Kev, mate. What are you having, pint? I'll oh, just half. Oh, I'll have a pint. I'm blown up. Just had a big tin of steak dumpling and a load of bread. Half a bit of pint. OK, well. I bet you're under like a flaming passion in that house, aren't you? Bet you got a different bird in here every night. He's not like that, are you, Kevin? No. Never been lucky, me. Oh, way. Go on. <laughs> That's another ten feet up. Sure. Thanks, Tom. Go on, admit it. You're having a right old time in the house with the birds, aren't you? Nothing. I'm not kidding, mate. Nothing. Oh, we'll have to put that to rights, won't we? Organise a bit of a party. Forget it. I'm having no rave-ups, cos it's Muggins here. He's got to do all the cleaning up. Besides, I've got to keep the house straight anyway for people coming round. Prospective buyers and that. All right. So what you want? It's a bird that's in the cleaning, as well as the other. Oh, yeah, got an old motor. The daddy's a millionaire. Very nice. I know of a bird, Kevin. She's into cleaning. Oh, yeah. Hilda Ogden. No, no, look, this is serious, right? She's a mate of Curly's. Now, she's not sensational looking. Still, that'll be Curly's problem, what won't it? What are you it? talking about? A cosy evening at your place. Forget it, I'm having no rave-ups. A small, ordinary rave-up. Now, you can't object to that, now, can you? Just the four of us, you, me, couple of birds. Well, six, including Curly and the bird that's into cleaning. Oh, come on, it'd be a great night. Yeah, OK. What's this bird like for me? Leave it with me. You'll not be disappointed. Betty, what? you got a meat and potato pie, please? Yeah. You look very pleased with yourself. What are you up to? Me? Nothing. I'm just very happy because I lead really, such a clean really. life. Really? <laughs> 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 Shorter length in the blue grey would be better, really. But you must never look at the with Any problems, Ivy? Uh, no, Mr. Bowie. Oh, that's unusual. <laughs> right, come in, love. Oh, Emily, I think you know Christine Millwood. Oh, yes. Hello. Everything happened while I was out. Beards, wells, we're on the phone. Beards, wells, oh, God, blind. Hello. Well, that's typical, isn't it, eh? I spend all week trying to pin them down, and the minute the back's turned, they're chasing me. Hello, this is a cutthroat game. And if you don't get the business, it doesn't matter if your designs are good, bad, or anywhere in between. Well, shall I wait? No, well, look, I'll tell you the truth, darling. I mean, I've got no idea how long I could do I mean, it could be half an hour. I could take all afternoon. Look, I'll tell you what. You leave your designs with me. I'll probably have a chance to look at them, and if you call back about, what, five, we can discuss them. I'm sorry to miss you about, but you can see I'm fixed. Well... It's the only offer I can make, Mum. All right, then. About five o'clock? Yeah, that'll be great. Cheers, thanks. See you later. No peace for the wicked, eh, Emily? There's always nothing urgent about the beard smells thing. It was only a query about zip length. Yeah, all right, OK, yeah. Hey, yeah. Well, I, mean, I had to try to tell you. Emily, look, don't worry. You did very well. Right. Oh, my dear son, how's that about buying your dear father a pint? Saving up, buy your own. Well, you're a miserable crow. Give it a pint, bit of please, Betty. Hey, you just missed your beer. If you'd have been here five minutes sooner, you'd have seen her. Yes, that's why I'm five minutes later. Oh. Betty, look. What? While we're quiet, I think yeah. I'll go and see about that there. Well, you know, the staff problem. Can't you go on the clothes? 
If I could, I would, love. Now, don't worry, there'll be nothing doing here. And anyway, I won't be above half an hour. See you. Hey, hey, hang on a minute. Look, hey, he's done it again. He's left me on my own. Whatever am I going to do if I get busy? Don't worry, Betty, love. If you get busy, I'll come round and pull a few pints with you. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Ah, curly, mate, just a lad. What's up? Nothing. Have a drink. Uh, Betty, half uh, a bit of a curly, please. OK, long. Hey, I thought you were saving up. This is an investment. Now, Curly, what are you doing tonight? Well, if the sky's clear, I'll be looking at stars. No chance. It'll be covering it down from every cloud. There'll be no stars on view. Well, in that case, I'll be reading. No, you won't, because your Uncle Terry is going to treat you. I have lined up an orgy. Now, when you say an orgy, Now, Terry, you do you... know what an orgy is, don't oh, you? Oh, yes, the ancient Romans went in for him. Right. Now, you look to me like a lad who so far has only read about him. Well, tonight, you're going to one, mate. Great. Where? Kevin's place. Yeah. So. Hard up. Thank you. Now, you know that girl that works in the dry cleaners in the precinct? Michelle, she's called, isn't she? Yeah. Well, I promised Kevin that she'd be round, right? So I want you to nip round and ask her. Now, don't tell her that it's an orgy. Say it's a party. No use. She won't go anywhere without her mate, uh, Sandra. All right, ask her as well. But she doesn't like me, does Sandra? She doesn't have to like you. Just tell her it's a party. Say there'll be bags of talent there. You can mention my name if you want. Yeah, listen, Sandy, you know, though. It sounds. Look. A bit... I know what you're wondering, but don't worry. I'll make sure that bird that fancies you turns up. What bird that fancies you me? You know, that Linda that we just tried to chat up in a disco that night. She hates me. She says I dance like a tin of cat meat. Oh, she's a weary, isn't she? I mean, that's half the battle. Oh, by the way, we'll have to lay some booze on, so you all right for the tenor? Yeah, I suppose. Are you sure this girl fancies well, me? Well, we'll find out tonight, won't we? You see, even if he pulled his weight. But she doesn't. I mean, we're still going to need somebody behind this bar. All he keeps saying is leave it with me, and he does not. He'll be working a flanker, won't he? How do you mean? What's the oldest dodge in the world, Betty? He'll be cracking on to brewery. He's paying wages for another barmaid and pocketing himself. Come on. Oh, no, he wouldn't. You're too trusting, Betty. I once knew a fellow who were claiming wages for a three-piece band and didn't even have a music licence. Oh, well, I don't know what he's doing. I'm <laughs> sick of it. I mean, if he's not going to get me any help, I'll get it myself. Hello, is that Christine? Oh, it's Mike Baldwin. Yeah, I wanted to catch it before you left home. Well, the, yeah, well, the thing is, it's bedlam here this afternoon. <laughs> I like to be eyes. Still, I'd sooner it was like that than too quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, the point is, yeah, it's a waste of time coming here now. Ah, well, what I suggest is, um, perhaps you could come to my place tonight. You got the address on that little card I gave you? Oh, it's difficult, is it? Well, the point is, it's the only time I can be sure of giving you in the next week or two, but, uh, I mean, I've got a lot on my plate. Well, I mean, I I if you can't make it... Oh, that's fine. Yeah, well, say about, what, eight o'clock? Yeah, right. Yeah, I've got to ring off now. I'm in the middle of a crisis. Yeah, see ya. Fine, love. That's it, love. Nice and gentle. Just a little... Look at that. Isn't that a very good pint, eh? Well done. Now, you ever go all on your own, eh? <laughs> like yeah, this? That's it. You see, I knew you'd pick it up. Yes, I could see you were a natural puller. In fact, I bet you could pull me if you put your mind to it, eh? <laughs> Yeah, well, you also need a sense of humour working behind a bar, love. Now, uh, is there anything else? Well, uh, there's the price list up there, but I think you'll soon pick it up. <laughs> oh, I hope you're not expecting me to know everything straight off. No, of course not. Now, don't worry. You are here because of your personality. I mean, there's another barmaid who knows the ropes. I mean, she'll be doing most of the necessary. You're just the decoration, aren't you? <laughs> as much as anything. <laughs> uh, if there are any problems, I am here to help. But you'll find Betty's very good, love. She's... Oh, you know, here she is now. early drinkers, you know, but we don't normally get packed until about nine o'clock, love. Betty, love? Yes? I'd like you to meet our new member of staff. This is Gloria. Gloria, Betty. A new member of staff? Yeah, worth waiting for, eh? Have you uh, worked behind the bar before, love? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I had a feeling. Well, for your information, this is Maureen. Mm -hmm. She's worked all over the place. Sawyer's arms, flying horse. All over, and I said she was starting tonight. Well, you'd no business to. Have you been messing me about? No, love, no, no. Now, come on, Betty. I make the decisions. Let's face it, I am the acting manager. Well, start acting like one. How long have I been asking you to get somebody? And you didn't, so I did. 
I come here in good faith. I don't want a lot of bother. There'll be no bother, lovey. Come and get your coat off. You're starting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very good. Have you got any more shirts you want looking at? No, there's just that one, I think. Oh. I've noticed, you know, you don't get your shirt collars very dirty. Or your cuffs, neither. Still, that's with working inside, I suppose. I sometimes used to wish Stan had had a nice office job. But no, he preferred fresh air. Oh, except in the house. Didn't like having the windows open. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> Is uh, that one of your railway books? Yeah. Don't let me stop you reading. Then again, although you're inside all day at your work, you're not a great one for going out at night, are you? No, not really. Oh, to do you good, you know. I was thinking, it would do you no harm to pop into the Rovers now and again, especially when you've had a hard day. Busy today, were you? Well, uh, it's moderate. Oh. oh, somebody was saying on the telly about uh, paperwork being more tiring than digging. <laughs> of course, they say a lot of daft things, don't they? <laughs> I, um, I wouldn't mind dropping down to the Rovers. Shall we just slip in for half an hour? I'm not keen, Mrs Ogden. Oh. Oh, well, if you're not keen. Only, I wouldn't have minded just half an hour. Why don't you go, Mrs Ogden? Oh, well, no, you don't always like going in on your own, you see. No, I shan't bother. It'll be a break, I suppose. Oh, if you're sure you're not reading. Right. Kevin will let you in. Tell him I sent you. Tell him I'm just hanging on here for Samantha, OK? OK. Hey, hey, hey. OK. What is going on in that house? Cos young Kevin told me it was just going to be a quiet night, three or four of you. That's what he thinks, isn't it? Well, a couple of them young girls look to me as if they're in need of parental guidance, so happen I should come along to a party and keep an eye on them, like. Look, Dad, it wouldn't be your style, right? But if you're feeling frisky, I know for a fact that they've got an over-60s night on at the Flying Horse. You've got a very cruel tongue, you. <laughs> She's never pulled a pint in her life. So. You can tell. Hey. Look at her. She's useless. Mind you, I feel useless myself. I'm studying like one of Lewis's. Oh, don't fret. It's only for tonight, will we? Frank. Well, it's nothing like you led me to believe. It's all right, love. I'll sort it out. It's only for tonight. Right, well, if you won't let me come with your flipping orgy, you might as well buy us a pint, then. All right, then. Can we have two pints, please? Certainly. Right. Blimey, the service has now improved in here. Didn't have any trouble finding the place, in. No, no trouble at all, so far. <laughs> Make yourself at home. Drink. Well, what I'd really like... Yeah? Well, what I'd really like is to get your opinions on my designs. Yeah, I'll tell you all about that later. You might as well have a drink in your hand. Gente. Yeah, all right, thanks. Well, I had a look at your designs, and I found them very interesting. A lot more interesting than I thought, to be honest. I think we can do something with them. Well, it's definitely a growing market, sportswear and leisure wear. A lot of money being spent on it. Something that could really take off. Hmm, so they keep telling me. And as far as I knew, it's something new. A complete line through different age groups. Something mum and the kids can wear. Like I said, I'm impressed. Cheers. Cheers. Who's looking after your little girl tonight? David, my husband. Ah. And what does he think about you trying to muscle in on the hard world of the rag trade, eh? He's very supportive. <laughs> Wouldn't he rather have you at home darn in his socks? No, it's not like that. No, oh, I wouldn't have married him if he was. And he knows you're here tonight? Yeah, I told him I was coming here to discuss my designs. Which I still want to do. Do you really like them? Mm. But like I said, they're very attractive, but, uh, well, before anything else happens, we've got a lot of things to think about. There's cost, marketing, packaging. We mustn't run till we can walk. Yes, but does that mean you're thinking of buying them? I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we've got something going for us that do us both a bit of good. Granted, she's a novice, but I think she's got potential. I bet you do. The point is, Betty, Maureen has got to go. Oh, yes. And I end up by being dodgy body for her. <laughs> if Maureen goes, 
So do I. Now look, Betty. Who the hell are these kids, anyway? Oh, pals of Terry Duckworth's, I think. Well, how many flaming pals has he got? Number 11. <laughs> Tell Kevin I'm just hanging on for Samantha, OK? Sit down. Terry, are they going to the party? Yeah, what's up? Oh, yeah, Kevin will go spare. There's 14 of them there already. You told him there'd just be six of us. Well, these things have a habit of expanding, don't they? Hey, Samantha's not there, is she? Samantha? You mean the blonde girl who works in the electricity showroom? Yeah, I fancy it strongly. Well, I'm sorry, mate. She's not at the party. Good. She said she'd come at the pub first. I've been trying to crack it for ages. Every time I suggest going out, she makes up some excuse. I thought to myself, box clever, she might go for a party. See what I mean? You mean you con Kevin into having a party on the off chance of getting away with that Samantha? More or less. Clever, isn't it? You know, you're totally unscrupulous, you, you know. Hey, is that Linda's not there either? I thought she might be in here. Who? Linda, the girl at the disco, the one that you claim fancies me. Oh, you said yeah, you'd speak to her yeah. today. Yeah, Linda, uh, yeah. Yeah, I did ask her. I saw her this afternoon and I told her about the party. I told her you'd be there. She said she's washing her hair tonight. Oh, flipping. Well, look, there's plenty of talent that has turned up. I mean, I'll be falling back on something myself if Samantha don't show. Hey, up, here's Samantha. Who's all them she's got with her? Who cares? Listen, mate, get us a pint in, right, and a baby shampoo for Samantha, okay? Oh, come on, Terry. Look, I'll see you, right, all right? Oh. Hi, sir. Curly's just getting us a drink, okay? What are you drinking, Mrs. Hogan? Oh, just a lantern. Are you anything to do with all that noise that's coming from Kevin Webster's? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're having a little get together. Oh, that's what Henry said it would be. My lodger, Mr. Wakefield. Oh, him at the bar. Well, I thought it was him this afternoon when I saw him, only I wasn't sure. Where was this Piccadilly station? No, in the reference library in town. I was in the astronomy section and he was in the next alcove. Oh, no. No, you're mistaken. He'd be at work this afternoon. He works at Piccadilly in the ad office. No, it was definitely him. I've seen him in the library before. I go there a lot. So does he. It's in a library book, have you, Mrs. Ogden? I've left it down here. Railway age, Michael Robbins. Oh, it's in the top drawer. <laughs> Put it out of arm's way, because they're very precious things, his books. They certainly are. Not that we ever have any money in the house. I never seem to get the time, and, well, my late husband, blessed, was never a great reader. Not for books, any road. Newspapers, yeah, now, they were different. Never a day passed without we didn't have a newspaper. I'm just opposite. Can't read newspapers. Too many tragedies for my liking. Oh, yeah. Every page, another dreadful story. It's one of them pictures. Oh, I know. It's an awful world we live in. Still, it could be worse, I suppose. At least we're working, and that's a blessing these days. That reminds me, I've got to give Mr Baldwin's flat a flick over with me duster this morning, so I best get moving. I me too. Do you, um, do you get in the library often? The big one in Manchester? Oh, not as often as I'd like. I pop down... You know, uh, lunch times if I get a chance, so I'll uh, have to work sometimes. Oh, I thought so. I said it wouldn't be you. That lad that lives down the road at Emily Bishop's, you know, works on the bins. Yeah. He said he'd seen you in there one day last week, in the middle of the afternoon. Well, I said it wouldn't be you, not at that time. I'm a lad at work. Yeah, that's what I said. Of course, he's a bit of a scatterbrain, you know. Lots of the younger end are nowadays, aren't they? <laughs> mm. Oh, thank you. So they're doing all right then? Yeah, my dad set himself up in the same line of business. Slow, he says, but sure. Now Debbie's enjoying herself. Oh, well, that's good to know, love. Anyway, remember me too when you're right again. Yeah, well. How are you getting on with selling your house? Anybody interested yet? Well, I don't know how interested they are, but the estate agent rang up last night and said there's somebody very interested in buying it. But well, that's all I could get out of him. So, looks like I'll be moving on soon. But you've got rid of most of your furniture, haven't you? I mean, didn't I see a removal then? Oh, aye, that's all gone down to Southampton, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I've got a few things left, bits and pieces, you know, but yeah. so it won't take them long to kick me out onto the street. Oh. Just hope it doesn't snow. <laughs> well, if it does, you just come here. Right, I will. <laughs> <laughs> there you is. Bye-bye. <laughs> May this rhyme. You don't say things like that, not to innocent young lads. Mm. Give me two pence. He's not an innocent young lad. Uh, be 24p, please. Living in hopes, though, weren't you? No, I was not living in hopes. All I meant was, if it snowed, he could come in here for a warm. Oh. It was a joke, I see. Well, maybe there's more than one way of warming a fella up. And you don't need to use electricity on them. Ta-ra. Oh, hello. Good morning. 
evening. Morning. Uh, have you got a copy of the railway, the magazine? No, I'm sorry. We had a couple, but they've gone. I can order it for you, if you like. Um, is, it, is it weekly or monthly? Uh, well, it doesn't matter. What's well, no bother, no? No, it doesn't matter, honest. I'll pick one up in Manchester. Oh. Thanks for what's safe. Um, um, how are you settling into Mrs. Ogden's, all right? Yeah, very well, thanks. Oh, that's good. Bye. Only me. I'm in the shop. You want to join me over? Not today, thank you. Answer the phone, please, don't you? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Baldwin's yes, again. Is Mr. Baldwin there, please? It's Christine Millwood speaking. Oh, hold the line, please. I'll see if he's about. Somebody call Christine Millwood. Are you decent? Tell her I won't be a minute. He won't be a moment. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll start in the bedroom, shall I? Yeah, do that and uh, close the door, eh? Hello, you're up bright and early. What, what can I do for you? I've been expecting to hear from you. You've still got my flying suit designs. I know I've still got your flying suit designs, and very nice they are too. Look, you don't have to be nice to me, and I don't want to waste your, your time, so if you're not thinking of using them... Who said that? As a matter of fact, I've been having long chats with Ivy, my supervisor. You have? Does that mean you're going into production? I didn't say that either. I'm somewhere in between the two. I'm interested, but I'm, I'm not ready for production yet. I mean, it takes a lot of thought, costs a lot of money. Well, look, why don't you pop down to the factory about a uh, quarter to one, we'll have another chat and perhaps uh, take it a step further. OK. Have you had any breakfast? Yeah, I had a cup of coffee. Oh, I don't know. Left to yourselves, you'd starve, you fellas. She sounded a nice girl. She is a nice girl, Olga. Bit on the persistent side, but uh, very nice. Jilly? Chris, can I cry on your shoulder for five minutes? Now, since when did I ever have husband trouble? I hardly know he's there most of the time. No, it's, it's these designs I'm working on. I know, I know. I'm impatient by nature, and that's the end of it. No, it's this uh, Mr. Baldwin. I don't know, but I think he's stringing me along. Well, I've no idea. I won't be surprised if he hasn't even looked at the damn things. Oh, Jilly. I'd do anything to get my stuff in shop windows. Well, almost anything. But I won't want him to know that. I've already got the feeling that the only designs he's interested in are the ones he's got on me. No, I told you, it's just a feeling. It's very enigmatic, our Mr. Baldwin. Here you go. Don't let it get cold. What have I done to deserve this? I don't talk as if I've never done anything for you. You haven't? Well, I'm saving all my good deeds up, eh? <laughs> no, no, I just wanted you to know that I'm very pleased with the way you're getting along. Very efficient. I'm glad Betty brought you in. You having me on? Why should I be having you on? Well, from all rumours that were flying around, I weren't expecting a cup of coffee, I were expecting a push. So, I've changed my mind. So, who's going? Not glorious glory. I can't sack her, now can I? I mean, poor little devil's got nothing. She's living on her own. She hasn't got two apenies to rub together. Or... No, nobody's going. Very generous in your old age. Now, don't mix me up with that Billy Walker or Gordon Lewis. I have never been anything else. Fancy a round of toast? Yes, please. Oh, oh them bosses, they're a law onto themselves. What have you been doing to Fearless, Frank? How do you mean? He's been singing me praises, saying how efficient I am. Oh, I am. There must be something wrong with him. He's up to something. Shut that door. Oh, Lord. Never let me. I mean, it could be a lot worse. Oh, well, that says maybe he's still up to something. Is Betty not in yet? No. She rang and she's got sore throat. Oh, she's best staying away, then. We can't be doing with people spreading the germs around. Oh, do you know what I feel like? I feel like one of them strippers running around the streets of So-So, is it, in London? Soho. Soho, that's it, yeah. Running around the streets of Soho from one job to the next. They must think I'm crackers around here. Well, come on then, Hilda. Give us a turn now you're here. Eh? Da, da, da. Oh, don't think I could. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 Right, you're booked. <laughs> Two ten-minute spots, eight o'clock and ten o'clock. And nothing too naughty, Hilda. <laughs> What's the matter? 
Oh, I, I shouldn't be laughing. Of course you should. No, no, I shouldn't. Not with them. Sorry, love. Come on now, Hilda. Mopey never did anyone here put her good. She's right, love. No, it's wrong. I, uh, I shouldn't be laughing. Morning. Morning. Oh, good. You brought the designs. I was going to remind you. Didn't need reminding. She was on the phone first thing this morning. Have you looked at them yet? Well, I but not properly. I'll have to, though. She's coming here today. You really have kept her dangling. I'd do her any harm. But why bother? It's as if she works here and you're trying to get more effort out of her. What's to be gained? You know, you're right, Emily. As usual, absolutely right. Don't know what I was thinking of. Two bottles of lager, please. Maureen, down there. Not All the foreigners of her. Oh. Hey, she waiting for Mountain. She's determined, I'll say that for her. Who are you talking about? That girl sat by herself at that table. Oh, what is she exactly? She's a designer. She wants Mike to make her designs up. Oh, what's her name, do you know? Um, what did Emily say? It's Christine. Yeah. So oh, so that's her. She was on the phone to him first thing this morning. Oh, oh gee, that. She can't name her alone. Hey, I don't know his work she's after her him. Oh, both. They <laughs> could be both. <laughs> Tell her. Can I have a big sandwich and a tomato juice? Soft drinks about there, love. All right. I'll get the sandwich for you. Hey, I'm going on your lodger, Hilda. Oh, very nicely. He's a very agreeable gentleman. I was just saying to Rita this morning, I'm sure I've seen him somewhere. I think he's got one of those faces. One or two people have said the same. Yes, well, it could be. I mean, he's a type, isn't he? I said, where's Betty? <laughs> She's not very well, though. Is she coming in later, did she say? We're waiting to hear, lovely. She's getting the doctor in. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. 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 Come on, Is that, you know, What do you fancy? Oh, no, no, no. I don't remember. Hello, ladies. Oh, oh, working yeah. hard? Yeah. Oh, never do I also over there. Good. Uh, can I buy you a drink? Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Look, I'll have uh, a pale ale, please. Yeah, I'll have the same, thanks. Uh, two pale ales and a gin and tonic, please. Right, yeah. oh. right well, what do you think to my designs, then? Well, I haven't seen them yet, love. Oh, I thought Mr Baldwin talked them over with you. It is Ivy, isn't it? Yes, I'm Ivy, but he's not showed me anything, love. No, he must be mistaken. Oh, must, mustn't I? <laughs> me all over. I'm always getting things wrong. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> Not short on style, is she? She knows what to do with her pockets and zips. It could be what the market's waiting for. I was checking the order book. Jeans and jackets are very slow compared with last year. Yeah, they're all scared of being left with stock that the kids don't want anymore. You know, I think you could be right. This could be what the trade's been waiting for. Flying suits and ski trousers. Mind you, we wouldn't be the first. Some of the boys have started already, but uh, their designs aren't all that good yet. And it could be, you know. She's here. Go on. <clears throat> I'm off to lunch now, then. All right, see you later. Come in, darling. Sit down. Oh, so you've seen them, then? Yes, I have seen them. Only I don't take back what I said on the phone. If you're not interested, please say so. As you may have gathered, I am quite keen to get them off the ground. Hey, hang on, hang on. What's brought this on? I don't know. Yes, I do. I've got the feeling you're stringing me along. I am not stringing you along. I'm going carefully and for good reason. This is your total investment. I've got to think of new production lines, new uh, fabrics, new outlets. It costs money. A lot of money. If I thought there was a reasonable chance... There is. Really? Really. Well, come on in. As you're here, I might as well take you for something to eat. Well, come on in. Go on, I'll do the glasses. Get yourself off. You sure? Oh, yeah. Go on. I don't mind. I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, I don't need telling twice. We're off home. Chuck teacher's letting us out early. Oh, good. Hang about. Uh, now, do you see what I've done down here? I've put the prices on the shelf so you won't have to ask. All, you, all you've got to remember is that if you restock, you've got to put the bottles in the right place or you'll charge the wrong price. <laughs> see you later, Maureen, love. <laughs> right. So, if you restock, 
So with lagers, you got to put the bottles there because that's the price for the lagers. Do you get it? Thanks very much. Do you fancy a night off? It's a quiet night tonight, and I thought it'd be a good idea if we uh, took advantage of the situation and went out for a little meal. <laughs> what do you say? Maureen will be on her own. Well, like I say, it's, uh, it's a quiet night, and uh, uh, I've got a feeling Betty will be in anyway. She didn't sound too bad. Yeah, OK. Oh, great. Uh, we won't let Maureen in on it, though, eh? I'll just say that you weren't feeling too well either, and then I'll pop round just after six. Uh. I'll bring half a bottle of scotch, eh, for the invalid. <laughs> Got it all worked out, haven't you? You get nothing if you don't try. See you tonight, then. Don't I get a little kiss on account? On account of you going to buy me my dinner? Why not? Oh, huh. is that all I get? I haven't had my dinner yet. <laughs> Hope you get better soon. So do I. I'll need all my strength to fight you off. Pantry. I beg your pardon? That little tea shop where we sometimes have afternoon tea, that's where I've seen him before. I don't know who you're talking oh. about, I'm sorry. I'm talking about Hilda's lodger, Mr Wakefield. That's where I've seen him before. He usually sits in the corner with his nose in a book. I can't say I remember. Oh, what a relief. I, I couldn't sleep last night for thinking about it. Oh, oh I mean where I've seen him before. So you can manage it then? Yes, I'll get the girls on them straight away. We're not pushed. Oh, don't I know him. Still, these could make our fortunes. Right, so you want two in fade out canvas and two in velvet, all right? Right. Oh, uh, by the way, she wouldn't pub this dinner time, that Millwood girl. Well, what was she doing there? I don't know. Just having a drink before she came to see you. She seemed to think that you'd talked these over with me already, but I said no, looking forward to seeing her. She's a clever girl, isn't she? Isn't she just? No sign of Gloria yet, then? No. She's half an hour late already. Mm. Happens she's ill. She was all right at lunchtime. Oh, no, she wasn't, love. Oh, no, she says she wasn't feeling too well. Uh, just after you left. Says she got this headache, you know, uh, felt she was sickening for something. Perhaps she's picked some of off for Betty. Uh, yeah, she could have done, couldn't she, yeah? Perhaps I ought to pop round and see how she is, eh, while we're slack. Well, give her a ring. Uh, no, love. No, she's not on the phone. I suppose she can't afford it, eh? Poor little thing. Hello. Uh, half a bitter, please. Has the lads been in? No, not yet, lad. They do. Can you tell them I might be in later on? But I've got a feeling I'm going to be stuck for the next hour. I've got a bloke coming down who's by nails. Got that far already? Yeah. Family's called Clayton. His name's Harry. Milkman round here. I don't know him myself. Not be long before you're away, then. Don't remind me. Do the same for you, you know. You didn't do it for Betty. She's not in the same boat, is she? Gloria's all on her own. Betty's still got that lodger of hers to run her errands for her. I hope you know you're leaving me here on my own. Not for long, Maureen, love. I mean, from the way Betty was talking on the phone, I expected to walk through that door any minute. Anyway, while we're slack, I think I'll just sit with Gloria for a while, you know, cheer her off. Frank! Oh, I am sorry, love. I've been gossiping in the corner shop and I should have been getting your tea. It's all right, Mrs Ogden, there's no hurry. You know, I think you must have a double round here. A lot of people have. Somebody else thinks they've seen you. <laughs> that Mavis who works for Rita Fairclough, she swore blind just now she'd seen you in a cafe up Bolton Road. Now, as if you'd be drinking tea in the middle of the day up Bolton Road. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter, love? You're a very good liar, Mrs. Ogden. I didn't want to lie to you. I don't work at Piccadilly Station. I don't work anywhere. I haven't got a job. Let me get you your tea. Oh, come in. Sorry to drag you back here, but uh, I think good news should be told to you face to face. So I can see you smile. I'm having your flying suits made up tomorrow. Yeah, one in canvas, one in velvet, just to see what they look like. Do you mean it? Yeah. 
Yeah, they see. You did smile, didn't you? Yeah, Ivy thinks she can manage it all right, but uh, there's nothing to stop you popping in any time you like to keep an eye on us. I mean, we don't do everything at the factory, you see. We send the canvas out to be washed, bleached, give them the old pumice stone look, and if it's any good, all we've got to do is find the orders. Oh, I can't tell you, Mr Baldwin. I just can't tell you. Mike! Now, how about that celebratory drink, or is that husband of yours waiting for you, is he? Uh, well, I said I wouldn't be too long. Oh, but he's very good at times like this. Oh, they're the sort of husbands I like. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, you better. There's a lot of hard work to be done. Well, I'm ready to do my share. Good. I'm sorry for being such a pest. What, do you mean, uh, checking up with the girls to see if I was stringing you along? <laughs> You're right, I was, but I was the mug. There was me looking for a new line, it was right under my nose. You know, this could be very big. I hope so. You don't know what it's like getting back in the business. I missed it terribly since I got married. You may be sorry. This is where the graph starts. Anything you want me to do, just shout. Can I have that in writing? Here's to success. Success. Right. Ah, oh, we had enough. Well, no need to force it down if you can't manage it. We have another cup of tea, eh? I'm sorry. Well, you mustn't be. You must have had a good reason for telling me them stories. If you want to tell me what it was, well, that's up to you. But if you don't, that's your pre... That's up to you and all. Won't make any difference. I'd like you to know she have been so good to me. Well, if it'll make you feel better. It was three months ago I was working at a foundry near where we lived. Not on the railways? No. In a foundry. I never actually... Anyway, there was this strike. They wanted to change shifts or something. Union didn't like it, so they called us out on strike. We didn't all want to, but in the end, we all came out. Well, I think I could have managed if my mother hadn't have been so ill. And she was bedridden, actually. Even at National Health, you can't be ill for nothing. We did get her prescriptions for free, because she was over 60, but, I mean, there were special foods to buy, and... The electric blanket broke, and we just what we one thing and another. I just didn't have enough money, so one day I got on my bike and I went to work through picket lines. Go on, love. I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. Everything changed. Well, I knew I was blacklegging, but but mates, friends of mine, they all turned against me. One minute we were drinking together and... Well, we didn't drink a lot. We used to meet up and talk about how things were going and... Next day it was as if... Well, as if I was the worst enemy of the Edding world. Hey, dear. Before, before I went back... I mean, neighbours used to come in and, and, and sit with my man, bring her things. Afterwards, nobody came. Not a soul. Did it very hard. I mean, she got used to it and then... I think if they'd known what it was like, they wouldn't have done that, them people. I mean, they couldn't have behaved like that if they'd known what it was like. I mean, they were decent lads, you know. I mean, mother's friends, they're decent people, all of them. Still can't believe it. And what happened to your mother? I think it played on her mind. And she got worse, and she had to go into hospital, and a couple of days later, she... passed on. Yeah, well, I know what that's like, love. Anyway, I, after she'd gone, I couldn't stand anymore. Nobody came to her funeral after all them years. She'd lived there all her life and not a soul came to her funeral. So I packed up and left. I told you I worked on the railways because it was the only thing I knew anything about. I thought if you knew I wasn't working, you wouldn't take me in. Stay tonight if it's all right with you, and I'll go first thing in the morning. Oh, no, no. No, Mrs. Ogden, you know the truth now, and I'm not having you lying on my behalf. There's been enough lies.
wouldn't be right you leaving now this morning. I mean, you pay to the end of the week and fair's fair. It's very considerate of you, Mrs. Ogden, but well, I don't know. I, I feel as if I've tattled this all wrong, all them daft tales I've told you. Hmm. Daft tales? If I got offended because folk told me daft tales, ooh, I could write a book on them. Now, you just get that down you and stop feeling so hard done by. You've now to be ashamed of. I did try to kid you about being in work. Yes, well, believe me, love, I'd be the last one to blame you for that. I thought you might feel a fool in the eyes of your neighbours. You know, if, if I stayed and they found out I went on railways. Well, I'd just tell them you got fed up dusting the meat pies. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Mrs. Hogden. I wish I'd got your sense of humour. Oh, you'll perk up once you're settled. And any road. There's no need for folk round here to find out, is there? Well, I can't go on living a lie. Now, there you go, you see, Henry, calling yourself a bad lot. Telling nosy folk a few fibs won't get you hung. Folks aren't to find out. I've got to stick with them fibs. I mean, they think I'm a booking clerk. So somebody comes up to me asking me about cheap fares and such. Well, tell him you changed your job. All right, so I tell him I'm a plumber. So they say, come on in, fix me tap. Oh, well, you could make it somewhat a bit more ordinary. A murderer. One of them it men. Bound to a penny, somebody be asking me how much meat the wife. No, Mrs. Salton. You've been very understanding, but I'm an embarrassment. I shall move on. Now, listen, you've paid till the end of the week. Well, you give me a refund. Well, uh, no, to be honest, I couldn't, actually, not just now. I'll give it to DHSS. Fair paying. Look, Henry, I don't know the rights and wrongs of all this, but I looked in my tea leaves this morning and I saw good signs. Signs that says you're more sinned against than sinning. Maybe. So, leave it till the end of the week, eh? See how you feel then. Till then, it's chin up and best foot forward. Mm. I'll have to get my skates on and all I've got the rovers to fettle and Betty's off. Hold up, Pops. Oh, bless you, love. Bless you, Mrs Ogden. You're one in a million. John, this seems never right. Well, that Christine cut it. Well, surely these trucks can't be part of style. <laughs> That's what I thought. I mean, OK, the flying suits. You want my opinion, you couldn't sell this lot to Biggles. Oh, well, you'll have to get that Christine out. I mean, we can't sort this without designer, can we? Well, I can't understand why she's not down here myself. Oh, well, she's only really part-time, ain't she, for pin money? Plus the fact that she's wedded, she's got a kid, eh? Off the drawing board, eh? The prototype, all set for the test flight. You must be joking. There's more snags in this than Flaming Concord. Hey, do you want one, Mr. Brogan? Thanks, me. Oh, do up some foot. Push this out. I'll cover some bare face. You see, look, Mr. Brogan, it's sleeve and set at shoulders. I'd take them top buttons off and not blow it up. Exactly. Flying suits one minute, birthday suit next. <laughs> hey, I'll have one. That and bread man for death. Well, can it be fixed? No, no, you'll have to get Christine down. No problem. I'll give her a bath. Well, what's, what about Vera in these lot? I mean, what shall I do? Shall I set them on some of those? Well, they'll have to sit on their hands till they get this lot sorted out, won't they? These samples have got top priority. Sit on the thumbs. Where's bonus in that? Well, they've taken early tea break. Hey, you with Ruba. Have we been diddled, have we been done? Oh, you'll get your bonus. Stop moaning. Oh. Flying so. And anybody told him what happened to Freddie Laker? Oh, Vera, stop clacking. I'm getting a headache. Ah, come on, have a bone. Give your false teeth a rest. You know your trouble. You're too money conscious, and money conscious people never get any, you know. And here ends the first lesson. Well. I don't mind being a bit light in the wage packet. Not if you let me do a bit of modelling and that. Oh, that's some folk gormless. Hello, Christine. Uh, Mike. I need your body. No joking aside, we've hit a snag with the outfit. Yeah. See you. Do you think that was a tail then, as Frank told me last night? Only it crossed my mind he might have a mark on. Well, of course he had a mark on. And I could tell you with. Gloria, you mean? Well, of course, Gloria. She'd be at his mercy, wouldn't she? In bed, I shouldn't wonder. And him sat there, feeling her pulse and stroking her forehead. Oh, girl. Oh, save your sympathy. Happen that little madam was all for it. She doesn't act like she's keen on him. Oh, she'd be keen enough if there was something in it for her. Like what? Well, like getting well in with the manager, you know, with the boss. Having a good sky while we do all the donkey work. <laughs> oh. How's Gloria? Can we expect her in today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was only a bit of a bug, yeah. How about you turning up was a right tonic? Yeah, it's just what the doctor ordered, Hilda. Hey, if I have a day off, will you come and hold my hand? Yeah, Maureen, look, the flying doctor would not be in it. <laughs> Mind, though, you'd have to be decent. None of them revealing nightdresses. 
Otherwise, I might not be able to keep control of myself. <laughs> no, what I need right now is a nice cup of steaming hot black coffee. So, if some kind soul would like to save my life, like, I, uh... Yeah, hold your horses. Got all the glasses yet? Oh, well, to love, I'm a sick man. Well, before you snuff it, there's all the empties and the bitter ones changing. Listen, I'm the manager, not the flaming cellar man. And I'm the cleaning person. And I'm not going down that mucky cellar because I've just washed my hair. I tell you what, though. If you're after a cellar man pro tem, I know just the chap. Mr Wakefield, my paying guest. Hilda Love, from what I've seen of your paying guest, he couldn't lift a pint, let alone a barrel. Right, what are these empties you're mithering on about? Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's about getting your lodger a job. I thought he was a booking clerk. Yes, well, you know what thought did, don't you? I'll go and see to his lordship's coffee. Uh, thanks, anyway. Uh, I just heard this morning as well that it's all more or less gone through. Oh. So if you do hear of any cheap digs on the door. Right, well, you pop in, I'll keep you posted. Thanks. Uh, look, I don't want you to think that I'm prying, but did I hear the name Clayton? Who, when I last came across him, which was only Friday of last week, was a milkman. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, well, it should be very convenient for everybody around here having a milkman as a neighbour. Except Mr Roberts. They sell everything on those vans, don't they? See you. Yes, love. Oh, yes, I've been so dark. Hey, ask her ladyship where we'll put the parachute. It goes on there, but don't tell me you've not done it, eh? Do you hear that idea? She's not allowed for the parachute. Mm, never mind about parachutes. These cups are bad enough. Hey, I once had a pair in it, cos you know me to have a parachute. But you had a hard job keeping them up, eh? Ha, <laughs> ha, no danger to rip cord. <laughs> I know it's a problem, love. My daughter-in-law, she works. Mind you, I reckon it all depends what way your husband sees it, you know, when it comes to, well, you know, career versus marriage and all that. Well, exactly. How's it going with you, Poppins? Uh, they're just finishing ends, Mr. Rowley. Yeah, and don't blame us if they're not right, you know, it's you rushing us. Signature needed? The way we've worked, we could have Christian Dior down here offering us over the odds. You are brilliant technicians, I know. Now, what do you think, Mr. Bishop? Is that class merchandise or is it a load of rubbish? Do you mind? But will it be on the rails in Carnaby Street? Given its quality work from the scenes trust department, I should imagine we've got a winner. <laughs> I'll leave these on your desk. Just think, our stuff in Carnaby Street. Hey, we'll have to go down for day, kid. Well, I can't see why you want to play in so. You haven't got aeroplane. Not half bad, I'd say. I think we've got the engineering about right. Oh, we certainly sorted them shoulders out your danger. Yeah. All it wants now is the old pumice stone treatment. Give it that worn look, yeah. you know. Call for you, Mr Baldwin. Hey, all right. Sorry about that, yeah. Mike Baldwin. Oh, hi, Alec. How's it going down there? Any action? Three appointments. Oh, that's good. Oh, isn't it? Yeah, right, shoot. Jerry Tate, yeah, Friday, 11, yeah. Uh, the fella from New Styles for lunch, yeah. And Trends, three. Look, uh, I'll be fetching the designer along. I think that's vital, don't you? Well, she's a bright girl, you know, does a good presentation. I reckon she'll be a big help. <laughs> next door to us, I don't believe it. <coughs> Do I detect a note of panic? Chickens coming home to roost? You might just be right on all the reputation she's got down at that dairy. They'll be hell to play him in their jack if they get talking. Listen, <laughs> I could have milkman at one side, a breadman at other. I, I don't care. It may be a challenge. I think it's Emily Bishop they'll have to watch. As long as they come in pairs and they've got a police escort, they'll be safe, won't they, Vera? No. You would not touch them, would you? All joking apart, kid. I'm just that one who's got a respectable family. We could have had a load of uh, loud mouth your balls. What's up, can't you stand competition? Come on, dolls, you will have no dinner now, Alex. Hello, I know a bit previous, but I just wondered what's the gazette in. Oh, my words, you're keen. You don't have time to unwrap them yet. Well, I don't want to be a nuisance, but if they have come in, I'd be glad if I could take mine. Something about you in it, is there, Mrs. Hopkinson? Oh, well, you never know, do you? Oh, <laughs> I remember once, which was years ago now, the Gazette did a feature on the historic buildings of Weatherfield. Well, I mean, there were loads of photos, you see. And there I was on one of the photos, just coming out of the market hall in my blue dirndl skirt. <laughs> oh, fancy. <laughs> oh, well, you here, Mrs Ogden. Uh, Mr Wakefield wanted this magazine on railways and so on. I managed to get it for him. Oh, oh, well, thank you very much. Um, shall I put it down on your bill? Uh, yes, yes, that'll be all right. All right. Uh, will you be wanting it regular now? 
Oh, uh, well, I couldn't say about that. Oh, well, not bothered then. Right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow. Oh, yeah. be good to put it on. Yes. And next, we wow. have Charmaine Mothin, our exclusive oh, worldwide creation. Oh. Come on, Shell. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I love that suits you. Ah, you've certainly got that slinky look. I think it helps a bit. No, Bianca Jagger, eat your arms. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give her a tash and she'll be dead ringer for flying off as a kite. Well, he's flying off as a kite when he's at home. He would have uh, pin up it more while. <laughs> Shoulders need a touch and the waist a bit on the high side. Turn around, let's have a look at the back. Still, it's looking good, girls. Yes, right. If I'm waiting for a 55 bus, I think I've missed it. Listen, Sunshine, if you want to be the model, why don't you just say so? Oh, I won't have the cheek. I've got more respect for myself. Oh, what sort of a crap's that? Look, I'm not trying to be catty, sure, but you don't move properly, do you? Mm. You don't know how to walk right? I mean, these models, well, they sort of have this walk, you know, oh. this... Oh, do they? All right, you demonstrate then. Ah, go on, we could do with a bit of a giggle. <laughs> Mr. Well, I've got you. We must have a chat up. Oh, hello, that's progress, isn't it, eh? <laughs> oh, I like it, yeah. Very nice indeed. In fact, very peachy. You please? I think it works. Mm. Still got slight reservations about the shoulders, but... Oh, well. We could lift that right up there like yeah, that. Yeah, we could just drop we this down a bit. Get off, it's equipment! Flying silks this week, eh? What we're making next week? Barrage balloons. And you were down for modelling, John. <laughs> you all right for lunch? I worked through. One of the girls brought me a balm cake. You could have had a bite, but I had this business thing on, you know. Um, all quiet on the home front. As long as I'm back round about five. As a matter of fact, I was uh, wondering if you could manage a couple of days. As long as it's in school hours. I don't mean working down here. This would be an overnight job. In what sense? In the sense that I've got things to do in London, guys to see in there. I don't think I can manage London, not for two days. Look, darling, I wouldn't suggest this if it wasn't vital. You've come up with a very good line, right? I can do it at a very fair price, but it's got to be sold. Well, I appreciate that, but I'm sure they sell insurance speciality. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on, who sold me these designs, then? Eh? The postman, the cat? You came busting in here and did your pitch, right? And no way would they have made that impact without that. It's the personal touch. That is the right trade. Mm, so I understand. Christine, look, what I'm saying is no one can sell your creations better than you. And these guys you'll be seeing in London, they're technicians. They'll be there with their little modifications. And if they don't see the designer, they'll think there's something dodgy. OK, you've made your point. Just whether I can organise it. I suppose Mum would have Kate for two days. But I can't make any definite commitment, not till I've discussed it with Dave. Right. You have a word with your husband. But like I said, if I keep playing this designer angle, I've got to pitch in with the designer. It's a, a matter of credibility. Do you get me? If... Hello. Yeah, put him on. Oh, hello, Pete. Jean jackets, you still doing them? I thought you'd gone bust. I'll be in touch. I need to know first thing in the morning. You'd heard I'd switched to flying suits. Now, who's been spreading that rumour, eh? You know what they say about flying suits, don't you? They're very hard to get off the ground. <laughs> Gloria not showing her face, yeah? No. Like Betty last night. Yeah. I must have got that wrong. I'm sure she said she'd be in. Well, she is, not So if you're hairing off on another Mercy Dash round to Gloria's, there'll be no option but to shut up shop here, will there? You could cope on your own, couldn't you? No, I couldn't. So whatever little scheme you and Gloria have got on, forget it. Scheme? I am insulted, Maureen. Here I am, the world's last Samaritan. Oh, listen, Frank, stop pulling my leg. You're the boss. If you want to go on the razzle with Gloria, just say the word. It's no skin off my nose. All we've got to do is lock them doors and I can get on the bus and go home. Honest, you do a good turn and folk think you're trying to pull a stroke. Hey, that barrel needs changing. We had no mild for the last half hour at dinner. I'm on my way, aren't I? I'm coming. Oh, heavens. What a rush of had. Surgery's crowded. I now have to go and get my prescription. Then Dr. Harvey do the trick. Dr. Harvey, jolly chap. Bandy legs, bald on top. Lovely doctor, except he's got very cold hands, they tell me. How would I know? Didn't you do the laying on of hands? It's usually part of the treatment. After the meal and the medicinal brandy. <sighs> 
don't know what you're raving about, quite honestly, Maureen. If you're inferring something because Frank Pop drowned. Oh, by act, love. You must think I'm green. All right, we went for a meal. But, I mean, I didn't suggest it. You enjoy it while you can, love. Next week, you'll have Bet Lynch to contend with. Oh, Frank's confirming the appointment. He's put a good word in at the brewery. He needs to put more than a good word in with Bet Lynch, love. Good evening, love. Uh, what is it like? A couple of pounds, please. Right. I'll see you lot tomorrow, then. Ciao. 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 Are you coming out, then? Oh, I'm not going to get rid of No. Oh. Hey, hey, up. is this night shift? I wanted to see Mr Baldwin. Is he in? Well, yes, but I think he's busy all the way. He's out in Why don't you come to put a name down for flying so well? <laughs> Can you not stop the cackling? I'm trying to think in here. Oh, it's all that. It's been coming out of here. Oh, come on, dear. I hope I'm not intruding, Mr Baldwin, but I wonder, could I just have a word? Won't it wait till tomorrow? Well, I hoped I'd picked a good time. It won't take a minute. Come on, then, but make it snappy. Well, uh, <clears throat> it's about this advert of yours, Mr Baldwin, for a, a general labourer. Blimey, don't tell me you're applying for it. Oh, not exactly, no, but... Uh, I do know a gentleman I think you might find suitable. So, if you did anticipate any difficulty... Well, no, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I thought it'd be quite a cue. Ah, that's what I thought. I thought to myself, oh, dear, he'll have all sorts of plying. Well, but this is getting a very long minute. I've got piecework rates to work out here before Ida gets the unions on me back. Ah, oh, well, if you push for time, Mr Baldwin, this could save you all them interviews, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you've got a point there. But, uh, this protégé of yours better not be a lame duck. I need someone a bit handy. Oh, he's handy, all right. Only lives across the road. It's, uh, Mr Wakefield I had in mind. Be paying guests. Hey, oh, hang on a minute. I've heard stories about him. Well, you might have heard tittle-tattle. Well, I heard he was a booking clerk. Oh, well, he chucked that. He had to, for health reasons. Well, he's after someone a bit more active. Well, I can promise him that. They keep him busy here. Oh, well, work won't frighten him. No, you can see he's been fetched up to work. And he's very neat, you know. Oh, you've only got to watch the way he puts coal on the fire. And I'll tell you one thing you'll never get from Mr Wakefield, that's disrespect. Hilda, all right, all right, all right, you've sold him to me. Now, I won't be here tomorrow, but I'll leave a note for Ivy. So if, uh, if you get him across early before the mob arrives, I'm sure he'll stand every chance. Oh, thanks very much, Mr Baldwin. You won't regret it. Much obliged. Believe me, what with new lines to cost, piecework rates to adjust... Then I get this designer, Christine, pouring her troubles out. Troubles? Well, seemingly Mr Baldwin's proposed a trip up to London to sell the new product, and she was a little bit worried that there might be a few strings. Ooh, more strings than the Philharmonic, I'd say. Well, absolutely. I mean, obviously discretion was called for, but I did feel honour bound to sort of hint that he does have a certain reputation. On the other hand, I did stress that when it's business, that usually comes first. <laughs> Is she going? Hard to say. I get the feeling her husband's not all that keen on this career thing. What? Well, I'd say it's been hectic. I certainly shan't need any rocking tonight. Excuse me. Didn't hear of any digs, did you? Oh, no, I'm sorry. As soon as I do, I'll give you a buzz. Okay. Have you not got anywhere yet, then, Kevin? Nothing definite. But Mavis tells me the Claytons are moving in at the end of the week. Seems likely. Aren't you worried? No. Some will turn up. If it doesn't, I can always dust down in the garage again. Try and not mind. Garage? At this time of the year? Won't that be a bit uncomfortable? Not like the trenches. You ask Mr Sugden. <laughs> See you now. <laughs> Hi. Well, that's terrible, isn't it? A young lad left to fend for himself. Still, he did have the option. Nevertheless. Hello, Mr Sugden. Oh! <laughs> Oh, at last, eh? <laughs> Don't they never chuck you out of that library? Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I missed bus, so I walked. Oh. Well, you must be starved through. Come and sit yourself down. <laughs> I'd better wash my hands first. It's surprising how dusty them books get. Oh. Your mum used to say to me when I was cross-referencing me Bradshaws, How are Henry? Your hands aren't fit. You look like you've been down at coal mine. <laughs> well, I must say, it's very nice to find good manners these days. Well, it's more a matter of hygiene, really. Some of the types you get hanging about in the library these days. Yeah. Now, don't mind me, Henry. You tuck in. I only eat like a bird myself. I've, uh, I've decided to be on my way first thing in the morning. Now, oh. you've been very understanding, Mrs Ogden. But it's no use me hanging about, not in circus. Well, when you say on your way, where did you have in mind? Well, for some reason, Hartlepool suggested itself. Oh, aye. What'll you be doing in Hartlepool's, then? 
Well, lay on the beach, go skin diving, pull off a big coup at the casino. Now, pardon me if I'm interfering, but what you need, Henry, is a job. I had a job for 20 odd years. Yes, well, now you've got another one starting tomorrow. Pardon? Oh, it's not much, just uh, handyman and general dog's body. But it'll do till you get on your feet. Um, just one thing at a time, Mrs. Hopkin. How have you managed to get me a job? Oh, I have my contacts, you know. Like Mr. Baldwin, for instance, Baldwin's Casuals. Are you talking about a factory cross the road? That's right, yes. I've had a word, and there's a position for you if you want it. I'm lost for words. <laughs> uh, it's not the job, I don't know whether that'll solve all, but it's just the kindness, the trouble you've taken. Oh, there's no trouble. Oh, and hey, you can try that on after. It's an overall. Went down the market and saw it going cheap. <laughs> this is old and honest. You shouldn't spend your money on me. Oh, it'll all go on your bill. And I'll be expecting my week in advance every Friday. So raise your glass, then. Here's to all success in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christine. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I thought I'd better ring now rather than wait till morning. You can't make the trip. Try again. You can make the trip. That's right. No problem. Dave's been really understanding. Look, uh, I'd better get off. I'll phone first thing in the morning and we can finalise things then. OK. Bye, darling. Explain job to you. Uh, yeah. Did you explain that it involves work and all? Well, I'll do anything you tell me to. Well, listen, my little chuckles, I haven't time to mess about with you. I'm busy. Now listen, look around, use your nose, now get on with it. How's he doing, the lad? He'll be all right when he's taking that gormless look off his face, bacon egg and... Oh, dear, look. I'll tell you what, I don't think they've any idea of a job today. Well, he won't have. He's not had a job since he left school. Oh, uh, he'll be all right. <coughs> Go for tea and one of those big biscuits, please. Huh? What are you doing here? I've got a few things to sort out. Brian's given us a day. Where are you up to with the house? Exchanging contracts, whatever that means. What that means is, the minute you've done that, the house is theirs. Where are you shifting to? Oh, uh, there's plenty of places, isn't there? You see Alf at the shop? Because Beth will be moving out of there. Is that right? <laughs> hey, I'd be laughing, wouldn't I? <laughs> well, I think you better see Alf. Yeah, well, drive him up. Hey, what about your tea? Oh, I'll come back for it. Keep it warm for us. You owe me for that biscuit! <coughs> hey, good Chuck. Tarlow. It's a bit hot, that. I'll let it cool down a bit. I'd have thought you'd have wanted it hot this weather. I like it hot any weather. Oh, honestly, <laughs> Jack, is that your idea of wit? Wit? I don't need wit. I've got charm, the good looks. I'm sorting out the money. When I've got that sorted out, I'll be irresistible. <laughs> yes, look. Is, uh, Mr. Roberts there? Oh, no, he's not, I'm afraid. He's busy at the council this morning. Is there anything I can do for you? Hellfire, son. You can't turn down an offer like that. Jack, will you shut up a minute? We're not all depraved like you, you know. I mean, can I take a message? Yeah, I just wondered if there's any chance of the uh, flat upstairs going. What, Beth's flat? Are you interested in it? Yeah, it's not got anyone moving in, do you know? Mm, not as far as I know, and I think I would know if he had got anybody moving in. I don't think he's even thought about it yet. Well, if you could mention it to him, I'll pop back later on. Mm. Will he be in this afternoon? He'd better be, love, or else I'm handing him a notice. Yeah. We'll tell him anyway, I'm first in the queue. Right. Yeah. Try, love. Why do they always look so me? Hey, lads, today. They all just look miserable as if they're carrying all the cares of the world. Well, they've got enough to be going on with. I wouldn't be that age again. You what? He's got no ties, brass in his pocket, decent trade. The world's his flaming football, isn't it? You were young once. At least I assume you were, since you've never shown no signs of growing up. What did you do that was so wonderful? I went round looking cheerful. Till that fateful day when that fella said them fatal words. I pronounce you man and wife. Out. Go on, take your bucket and skip. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you just caught me on my way out, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, that's lucky, then. Well, unless it's something important, perhaps it would keep till another time. Just keeping you abreast, Mrs Bishop. That's the secret of every successful campaign, is that? Keeping the officers abreast of developments. Yes, I'm sure <coughs> it is. Now, we're Monty's guiding principle with that. Now, I can see you rushing, but you'd be glad I caught you. 
Now, uh, Hospital Leader of Friends Charity Dam stated to play as follows. The uh, sentence book for February 13 from 1900 hours till 00, 00 hours or 2400 hours, whichever you prefer. Oh. Now, I've shifted car maintenance to Tuesday and I've told the karate man he'll have to skip a week. He didn't like it. But I was fair with him. You've got to be. Well, Mr. Sutherland, it's not definite whether we're going to have a dance at all. Well, there's no impediment now. The hall's available. I've made sure it is. Well, it's not just the hall. Some of the committee are not enthusiastic about the very idea of a dance. Are they not? The last time we did it, we didn't sell enough tickets. For one reason or another, it was, by and large, a disaster. Ah, but who was organising it? Well, it would be uncharitable to name names. I will take some of the blame myself. Well, you've not to worry about this time, have you? Eh? Because you'll have an organisational mastermind behind you, me. I'm not the sort to hide my light under a bushel, and for your good self, I'll pull out all the stops. Who organised the Autumn Fair, eh? And the Street Olympics? Even as you were speaking, Mr Sugden, they did flash across my mind. Well, then, Mrs Bishop, rest assured, my colours are nailed to the mast. As far as this dance is concerned, it's full steam ahead. Twist. Again. Twist. I didn't have any chicken and ham, so I got your beef and onion. Damn it. Paid sweaty ones. <laughs> Here, why don't you have another party? Suppose you could. Well, you got me beef and onion. I just said. I ate beef and onion. Here, have my fish. I don't mind. What's the name of these people, any road? Clayton. You know, I'm the milkman. Oh, yeah. What time are they coming around? The time. That's all we said. Can they chuck you out now? Suppose you could if you want. Well, you can look in with me for a bit if you want. Emily doesn't mind, she said. Oh, God. She looks shaft all right, does Emily? Mm, don't fancy that much. You want somewhere where you can take a girl back, don't you, and have your evil way? There's more to life than sex, Terry. Oh, there is. Weird old bedaddles, look. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, do you want us to clear off or what? Why? Because you've got them coming round, haven't you? Do you want to clear the house up? We can get knotted. It's your deal anyway. Oh, hang on. My, you made a good job of that, haven't you? Thanks very much, Purcell, lad. Ah, it's a pity you don't do as good a job of my windows. Them terrible smears on your windows is on the inside where your nose keeps touching the glass. Any road, there's a satisfaction in doing that, isn't there? I mean, it's a cracking motor, isn't it? Bit too ostentatious for my liking. <laughs> All ready for you here, Chief. All right. Well, give that mirror another polish, will you? I've got to keep my eyes open for the fuzz on the M1. I'll take those on. Do you want to climb in? Go off down to the smoke, then. Smoke? That went out with a sock with camel. Haven't you ever heard of the Clean Air Act? All right. There you go, my son. Any time, Squire. See ya. Right. Behave yourself, then. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Right, then. Let's see if you can impress the geezers down there as much as you've impressed me. I'm amazed. I never thought things had happened this quick. Anything that doesn't happen quickly in this business, darling, just doesn't happen. Seatbelt tight? Right. <laughs> How do you fancy taking her to London in a big flash jag? Or would that be too ostentatious for you? Oh, uh, I could be persuaded. Maybe next some fellas have got it made, haven't they? Well, I know it's very handy. And it's very nice. But I must say, the view of that factory did not grow on me. Hello, lad. Mr. and Mrs. Clayton. I think you've seen me once before when I came to look the first time. Yeah. You better come in then. What was it you wanted to do, any road? Oh, you know, just measure up. Bedrooms in particular. Oh, hello there. 
Paul, though. All right. You look like squatters. Yeah. Sorry about the mess and everything. Well, I hope you're not squatters, cos it's our house from this afternoon, you know. Come on, love, look sharpish. We could fetch a carpet and get it down at Girls' Room by tonight. Ah, that's the first thing, cos our Andrea's got to have a place that's straight. She's doing A-levels. Studying. Oh, I see. It's brainy one, like. Other one takes after me. Probably leave school with not but a sigh of relief. <laughs> Here. I wonder if she's worth distracting from her studies, this, uh, Andrea Bird. You've got a one-track mind, Terry. Oh. Come on. You're not leaving these things behind, are you? No, I'll shift it. It's only my bedding and a few things. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do what it says in the good book. Pick up thy sleeping bag and walk. <laughs> <laughs> See you, mate. Keep a line, See you, mate. You learn all about it? Yeah. Right, that's all right. Which one is this? That's it. Give us a pint, will you? Oh, I'm making a wet one. I'm crying out for it. Oh, I've been at a committee meeting. Aye, ways and means. The only way some of that lot would understand would be a kick up the backside. And what was on the agenda? Well, what else? The cuts we've got to make. Government says we've got to. Labour lads won't agree to anything. Tory lads say that we've got to. They won't tell us what. They've been shouting and screaming for the whole morning. Well, isn't that what politics is? <laughs> and did you join in the shouting? I just tried to introduce a note of common sense. You can't go introducing strange concepts like that. Common sense. Ah, well, lots of people think they've got it, you know, but you can't study it. You can't take an O level in it. You can't take an A level in common sense. You can't go to university to do it. Well, if you've got it, you don't need to, then, do you? Look, lad, some people have a musical ear. They still go study music, don't they? You know, I could fancy myself as the Regius Professor of Common Sense at the University of Oxford. You? Who says you've got it? <laughs> I don't think we know what common sense is half the time. Well, genius, lad, is a matter of spotting something clever. Common sense is a matter of spotting something stupid. Ah, but how do you define what is stupid? Well, it's like... It's like making a plan to break the bank at Monte Carlo, and when you do, you find you've got less than they have. Now, that is stupid, but when you know that's going to happen, and you still go ahead with it, that is bloody-mindedly stupid, and that's what's going on. Now, here's three up right, young men. Young? At the moment, I feel about 102. Well, what you need is a flippy good night out, so put this down in your diaries, all of you. February 13th, over at Centre, we're having, uh, I'll tell you the more convenient time, I can see you rush. I'll have the other half, friend, please. Bitter. That's right, thanks. Shocking day. Yeah. Fancy bumping into you. Aye, fancy. What's all this about up at the centre, Mr. Sugar? I'll tell you all in due season, lad. It's a shocking day. Do you know I've had to walk back to the top of Rosamond Street to try to change a cardigan? I thought this was a busy time in that cafe. It's just set a new boy on now, don't me? I took him in at deep end. Here, let me pay for this one. No, 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 no. I'm just having this out because I'm in a rush, really, and I won't be able to reciprocate. It's all right. It'll do again, and I'll have a bottle of stout. Well, as long as somebody pays. Oh, yeah. thanks very much. I'm on a bottle of stout now. That's why I popped in the doctor's orders. Mm. You want to try it? It's very good for your vitality. Yeah. Not taking an excess, mind. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like my new perfume? Is that what it is? I thought it were bitter coming to the end at Barrel. Yeah, lads, uh, double-legged chips, sausage egg and chips. Sausage over here. Great, there you go. All right. Do me a favour, son. Yeah. Reach me fags off that table, will you? Yeah. All right, there you go. And the matches. Yep. Yeah. very much. You're a good lad. Get a big dip. I think he's impervious to charm. I even bought him a drink, and he didn't even say good health. Never mind, here's looking at you, kid. Hey, I chop. Cheers. Did you buy you one back? Did he, eh? And there was me with best perfume on. That's the one on Tom Bowler. Mind you, a morning in here, and best scented world would be struggling. Hey, son, have you cleared my fags away? Yeah. Uh, my fags? They were here. At least they were his. Then you believed him? He's a rogue, him. Hey, can he have his fags back? I like him. Hey, son, shift my fags again and I'll be seen to you, all right? You leave him alone. He's not used to you lot. Used to feed the animals in the zoo, so working here has come as a shock to him. And the munchies. Oh, time we had a couple of nice girls moving in round our way. Uh, probably a bit young, though. What do you mean, young? You've got to be at least 16. I didn't mean it like that. Under 
right. It seems all right, because you can't take them in the boozer, and that way you save a load of money. <laughs> There's nowhere to take a girl around here. Anyway, if you had a girl, then it costs you more going to a disco. I don't think you're bringing all your girls back to my place. You haven't got a place. You're homeless. Oh, I've got my marker down on that flat over Robo shop. Hey, it'd be dead handy, that would, wouldn't it? See? I knew the first thing it'd cross your mind. I better go and make sure anyway. See you later. Yeah, yeah. If I was to get myself down there smartish, I won't mind that place for myself. Hello, love. I just popped in to say don't go breaking your neck. I'll pick Tracy up. Oh, good, because I've got some shopping to do and I didn't have time at dinner. Yeah, I know, because he was in the pub. Oh, yes. The committee just went on and on, did it? Listen, I only had a half. I was only there five minutes. Anyway, I was gasping. Ah, uh, don't talk to me. Well, that's you drummed out of the lodge, isn't it, Kenneth? <laughs> if we drinking fellas can't tell lies for one another, Anyway, where's all the shopping you're doing? Oh, it's all right. I'll not bother now. I'll get Ken to drive me to the hypermarket. Uh, I'll see you later, love. Get something nice for tea. All right, love. I'm sorry, man. Oh, oh, the very man. Uh, sorry, Percy. Now, I'm you're uh, a champ that can be relied upon in a good cause. Yes, and yes. Uh, I bet you and your lovely lady wife cut a bit of a chassis on the dance floor, eh? Featherstone and Ginger Rogers. Oh, I am. Uh, I'm not the world's greatest dancer. Well, I am, so come along and I'll give you lessons. No, seriously, will you come? February the 13th, eh? It's uh, all for charity. It's all in aid of the Hospital League of Friends. Now, Mrs Bishop specially asked me to organise it for her. Now, you wouldn't want to let her down, now, would you? Yeah, but I don't know what we're doing. Well, you do now. You're fetching that lovely lady to a dance. Isn't that right, love? Yeah. I bet you could step out and show them too, Councillor. You big fat fellas usually neat on your feet. Put that in your diaries, then. Cheerio. One of these days will be neat on my feet on his blooming head. Yes, love. Yeah. Oh, yes, Alf, uh, Kevin wants a word with you. Oh, aye. Yeah, it's about the flat. What flat? The flat what's going here. There's no flat going here, lad, sorry. No, I mean, bet flat, cos someone said she'll be moving in the Rovers. Ah, yeah. Well, when she does, I've decided not to let the rooms anymore. All right? Oh. Oh. Sorry, lad. You, uh, moving in now? No, we just stick the stuff as and when we can. We'll pull your things together. Yeah, so I can see. Is it OK if we leave it for a bit? Well, I suppose... Well, if it's not for too long, cos they are in the way. Yeah, and, uh, I'll come and pick it up later on. And, uh, you've some things in the kitchen. Oh, and a chair, wasn't there, Harry? Have we put it in the outhouse? Yeah, it's only good for firewood. I'll, uh, be back for anything else. See ya. There's been some goings on in that family. It's not for us to inquire, is it, love? I wish I could feel it had been a happy house. Hey, come on. Don't start that. Hey? It was gorgeous. Thanks ever so much, really. You looked like you were enjoying it, which is good. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's taking the lady for a meal and never moan about the calories. <laughs> you gave that lobster a bit of stick, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Hold two brandies, please. Make them large ones. Oh, no, a small one's okay for me, thanks. I've eaten small ones. Do you know something? What? That's the first time I've ever had lobster. No, really? Yeah, I watched the woman at the next table because she had it, so I just did what she did. You know, uh, the one in the Schiaparelli kind of dress. Take your word about the dress. I, uh, did notice a woman, though. Yeah, I noticed you noticed the woman. I imagine you usually do, don't you? No more than any other bloke. Your drink, signore. Cheers. Uh, take one yourself. Thank you. No, I think you're one of those men that notices women more than some. What makes you say that? No, oh, because I've watched you. Whenever you notice a woman, it's as if you're wondering whether to do something about it. It's very confident, the way you notice women. It's a ploy. Take no notice. Mm. I'd have thought you'd have been an expert on what men notice in women. Seeing as most men must notice you. Suoresto, signore. Oh, thank you very much. Come on. 
didn't have to say that. I wasn't trying to flirt. Don't take no notice. What's flirting? Makes the world go round like, um, good manners. Well, as long as the rules are understood. Sure. And since it springs to mind that you're married, what does your old man think about you coming to London with me? He understands. Most blokes wouldn't. Yeah, well, he's not most blokes. That's why I married him. Well, if your designs go down like they did today, you better get used to it. You know, you really are good at putting your ideas across. I mean, that bloke I took you to see today, I mean, he's seen the lot. He was very impressed with you. So was I. Do you know, if I ever see people coming out of shops wearing my stuff, it is going to be the biggest thrill of my life, honestly. Well, let's hope I can do little things like that for you, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know it sounded like a bit of gentle arm twisting. What I meant was, uh, Every success. I'm glad you came to me. Coco, just the thing on a night like this. Oh, smashing. Thanks, Emily. He's good, isn't he, Patrick Moore? I wish I could do that, you know, tell people about the stars and everything. Could you see me, eh? I think the main thing he's got is his enthusiasm, isn't it? You'd at least have that. Mm. It's the only qualification I would have. Doing a job you're really, utterly engrossed in must be wonderful. Mm. That's the only problem with the bins. You can't really work up much of an interest. You could do something much better if you tried. You've got an inquiring mind. <laughs> There's times when that is not an advantage, because some bins are definitely not worth inquiring into. I can see you in some sort of white coat job, in a lab at a hospital, something like that. It'd be much more up your street. Ah, the trouble with hospitals is you catch every disease going, don't you? At least on the bins it's healthy, all that fresh air. Well, uh, oh, see who it is. I, I don't like going in my dressing gown. Right. Probably somebody knocked at the wrong door anyway at this time. Oh, hello, Kev. Come in. It's Kevin. Hello, Mrs. Bishop. Hello, Kevin. Curly said you said I could stay here if I had nowhere else. Do you remember? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, I remember. Have you nowhere for the night? Well, I went down to the garage again, but it's really sort of miserable down there. Oh, I should imagine it is. Well, if Norman doesn't mind, no, I don't. Of course not. I mean, I, I wouldn't have bothered you, don't I? It's freezing down there as well. Mm, you look as if you need thawing out yourself. Make yourself at home. I'll get you some cocoa. Here, take mine. You look as though you need it. Take a seat. Still, you'll be okay when you're getting over the shop, eh? It's all fell through, that. Oh. Now take your coat off. Yeah, you might as well. Looks as though you're stopping. Well, uh, how long are you staying with us? I don't know. I mean. I said I wouldn't go to Southampton, and I didn't. So here I am, homeless. The street continues to moronise at the same time. And by the way, if you want to find out what's coming soon to Granada Plus, then just click onto our website at gplus.co.uk. Next, we've got Georgia Mildred.